So Hello, s- welcome me, welcome you. Happy Halloween. Are you not gonna wear your headphones anymore? Um, I didn't feel a need to because I can hear you. We're like really close. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's cool. I mean, it takes the the specialness out of it. Oh, let me put these on so I look official. <laughs> like a whistle. Unless you're uncomfortable in them. No. They do have I just don't know who's everybody's ears being Okay, known. I don't know who's and face. They got lots of germs. Who's just, sideburns been on like this bitch? It's thousands and thousands per hour that get oh, up in there. Are you? I'm sorry. Okay, anyway, Queen, uh, welcome. <laughs> Queen. Happy Halloween. I know it's your favorite time of year. It's my favorite holiday. I'm excited to see what you're going to be. <laughs> Naked. I'm, I'm sure. I'm not excited necessarily about that part because it would be a little strange. But I am excited to see what your costume is because <sighs> you always shut the gram down with your oh, costume. Oh, stop it. I, can't, I mean, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you deserve all the accolades. But um, before we all get into the things, um, what, what's playing in the living room this week? This song is On You by Easy Killem, a.k.a. Jojo is King Swag is where you can find him on Instagram. And you can find his tracks on SoundCloud. I can still feel where the mic touch my face. Oh my God! So if <sighs> if the mouth if the mouse if the mouth part touches my face, I'm gonna cut my lips off. Yeah, I feel like I'm getting. I'm, I do not like I'm these getting shared. A cold sore as we speak. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting mono breathing over this thing. I don't like I it. I would like y'all to know that we are in a nice studio. It is nice. It's a it's nice not studio. A hole in the wall. It's just the fact that other people use we these mics. We make it sound like that studio out. from the first uh, season of Empire. You remember, uh, maybe it was the second. When it was in a basement or something? Yeah, like remember they yeah. like broke up, like t- like Taraji took her kids and went to, got her own studio. And that shit I remember very little because you know I only watched the first season. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Maybe that, I can't remember what season it was, but yeah, it was basically it was in the hood and people were getting shanked and shit. That's how we're making uh, this sound, but it's not like that. Yeah. It's in the gentrified part of town. Yeah, they have a white people door. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We were just talking about white people doors on the way here. Apparently, that's a thing. Yeah, if you uh, go through a neighborhood that is clearly being gentrified, you'll see that all the doors, like, kind of just look the same. (laughs) Like, they just look white. I don't even know how else to describe it. They just look like, "Mm mm-hmm, if I knock on this, a white person will be on the other side. Mm -hmm. That, and we were talking about also how we only see houses... That have with American flags being owned by white people. Oh yeah. Do y'all? If you, I'm and not I mean, flying one of those things. And if you know somebody who is uh, not white that has an American flag, <laughs> please DM me and let me. Yeah, know. they could be a guest on the show for being so weird. Because right. <laughs> <laughs> I just would be astonished. Okay, but uh, now that we have talked about it, we've had all our tangents. That's first. good though. We started with tangents, and now we can get into the show. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We're getting better at this, guys. Um. All right. So month in review. Month Queen. in review. Do you want me to go first? Absolutely. Okay. Take it away, young queen. All right. So in my personal life, I went to homecoming. ECU homecoming. Yes. How was starting and plotting at the East Carolina University, Sid? People are always very surprised to see me at homecoming <laughs> because they'll ask me like, "Oh, what parties you going to?" And I'm always none. like, "None." <laughs> and they look at me like. Like, with the most confusion I have ever seen in my life. And oh, I'm just yes. like, and it was funny because I, I saw Cassidy there. And she, like, looked at me. And I was standing next to Indy. And she was like, are you going? And she's like, never mind. Yep. Indy, are you going out? And I was <laughs> like, wait, what? And she was like, oh, I thought it was, like, knowledge that you didn't go out. I would like people to know that if you hold Sydney down and you force her to drive the boat and pour a shot down her throat, she's a great time when she goes out. I mean, she'll crawl on the bar and cry, but... <laughs> Because <laughs> her wow. small little body cannot handle alcohol. I think your veins are like really, really tiny or something. Okay. Thank but you yeah, for telling getting everyone. you drunk is my favorite thing. I've only seen it like twice, maybe. Yeah, it's not it's not a <laughs> likely thing. And you kind of you blackmailed me into it at my graduation because yeah. I had all intents and purposes of not drinking. And then Aisha walks in the house with like, I feel like three gigantic ass bottles. And you're like... Uh-huh. I'm not gonna drink the alcohol I bought you with yeah. your sad face and I'm yeah. like yeah don't waste my money Sid now I can't now I have to drink but yeah. I was having back problems at the time and I remember just like sliding across the couch like oh my back feels great <laughs> so yeah you like floated I'm like yep I think she's drunk now y'all because <laughs> I had never seen you drunk I don't think oh yeah good times um oh yes yeah, so back to so homecoming, homecoming was fun it you know fun. you know if I ever well, when I do go, I literally only care about going to the cookout. That's mm-hmm. just, which, you know, is funny because I don't eat any of the food. But um, I just like to see the people there. Yeah. And, you know, I can wear comfortable shoes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a black ass. It's, it's a black ass time. It's it a good is. black ass time. It is. It's hella black. I was So walking. I hope y'all had fun. Yeah, I hope everybody yeah. had fun for me because I didn't go. Ugh. Yeah. I mean, I, and then I, saw, I ran into Dan P. Lee, who I love to call Pharaoh, even though he no longer goes by that. Oh, yes. D.P. Lee. And he was like, where's Aisha? You should have brought Aisha. And I was like, yeah. You know, she just got back from L.A., so <laughs> she's, you know, living her best life. Yes, I had a here. few people ask me why I wasn't going, and I was like, eh. I mean, I, w- I would have liked to go, but for one, you know I'm not a fan of driving. 
mm-hmm. or being in a car. So even if I'm not driving, I still complain. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, you know, needed to be working and not out here partying Spending like I money. ain't got <laughs> responsibilities. Right, right. So yeah, and it, it's understandable. But yeah, um, it was definitely fun. You know, I, I more so go to see people whom I wouldn't see otherwise because, yeah. you know, like the people who have left Greenville will come back and stay with their friends. So I said, mm-hmm. I got to see the three queens, which again, if y'all don't know who that is, that's Brianna, Amber, and Deja. Mm-hmm. And um, because you know, Amber has moved away, but she'll like come back because Deja and um, Brianna are still there. Mm-hmm. So um, I got to see them, and that was like, I got to see Enoch. And I'm trying to think, I think that was it as far as people that were there that I w- literally went to see because Jasmine was out of town. But yeah, it was nice. Uh, Xavier came, and he was only there for one night, and he called me at three o'clock in the morning. And then the next time I like called him too. back, he was like, Never oh, mind. I was there, but now I'm gone. And I was like, are you okay? Ew! Oh, it's a fuzzy. Okay. I thought it was a white hair. <laughs> I almost left the studio. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> so uh, I didn't get to see Xavier, but he was there. And it's my fault. because I, sh- I, sh- I kept rem- kept telling myself, make sure you ask Xavier if he's going because, you know, he don't live there no more. I'm so used to him being in Greenville. Yeah, I would like to say that you've been getting cussed out in my text messages. Mm-hmm, I know. I get cussed out a lot. What the fuck is Sydney? I'm like, oh, um, oh, you know what? That's my fault that people call you more than once when your phone is on Do Not Disturb. Well, not, oh. <laughs> well, now the world can. <laughs> but if Sydney don't answer, I have to call her back to back because her phone is perpetually off or on Do Not Disturb. Yeah. So when X couldn't get a hold of you, I'm like, oh, she's not ignoring you. You have to call like 15 times because her phone will not <laughs> let her call Yeah, it will not come through that first time. And now that everybody knows that now, I'm going to need like. You're all welcome. Gonna- if you need to call Sid. Just blow her phone up. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm at the, I need like a second, like a 2.0 D&D because no. I need Apple to give me the, hey, everyone knew, knows my phone is on D&D, so now give me like the, you got to call three times instead of two times. Now everybody knows how many times to call me. <laughs> okay, so yeah, oh, Homecoming was fun. All the black people <sighs> were there. Um, Shout out to Homecoming season. It's such a good season because the gram is lit up. Everybody seems happy. Mm-hmm. You can all be out there lying about what you do <laughs> and not using your degree. Right. Uh, flexing in $900 pairs of shoes while your car note is due. It's a good time to be young, black, and at a homecoming. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, that was great. Um, I wanted to check in on your baldness. What is this now? Like week two? Yeah, week two, maybe two and a half, maybe. Mm-hmm. How, like how's that. life? Um, I cut it back down once. And oh. And then since then, I haven't. Okay. I'm trying to find a cool um, hairstylist or barber. Okay. I would just say a barber, but they don't wash your head. And, you know, I want my scalp scrubbed. So, you know, okay. I need a stylist. Okay. But, yeah, I'm trying to find one of those in Charlotte. So if you do that, hey, let your girl know because I need to get my hair did. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know what I want to do to it yet, though. I kind of just want to rebuzz it because it was just... To me, it was beautiful, yeah. buzzed, and yeah. really, really short. Yeah. And now it's at, a, like, an awkward length. Like, I can't, like, put some finger waves in it, and I can't, like, just brush it backwards in the buzz look. So yeah. now I just kind of look like a potato. Why do you always say that? <laughs> you do not look like a potato. It looks nice. I mean, you're right. I look like a tennis still. ball, a black tennis ball. That's I don't <laughs> even have anything to say. I look like this microphone cover no you don't yes i do okay. that's why i have a hat enough. on right now i've had enough i saw yeah when i came to the car i was, like, I was just wearing a hat so i don't get to see your bald head today oh yeah i can show it to you it it's gonna look like a black tennis ball i doubt that <laughs> uh, but i still love it i don't miss my hair in the yeah. slightest know, which is right? crazy because i just even when i did it i'm like oh yeah i have no regret like just do it like and i had no feelings about it like it was very like oh yeah cut it like whatever mm-hmm. but i did think like oh yeah in two weeks i'm gonna be upset with myself like mm-hmm. aisha you have got to stop being so impulsive. Mm-hmm. But I don't feel that at all. Yeah, no, it's, I think the only time, unless you like just do, unless you are initially like that because you don't like short hair on yourself, mm-hmm. I feel like the only time people like quote unquote miss their hair or regret it is when you're in those awkward, awkward ass in between yeah. stages. Like, yeah. like for instance, because I, I, what I've noticed is, is that I, I also, along with what seems to be a majority of people like me with longer short hair, if that mm-hmm. makes sense, instead of a bald head. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's just my head shape. Like we talked about before, I think that there's a hair cut for everyone so mm-hmm. someone like me I might just need more hair on the top I can still keep the sides in the back low but I just need more hair but like I so when I went to see the three queens they're like I like this I love this on you and I was like oh yeah you were your twist mm-hmm. okay. and I was like um let me tell you something I like this this is probably like my second favorite to one of my other short lengths like not the short hey length time length. out I'm so sorry but something just popped up on my phone it's JP's birthday today Oh, well, happy birthday. And I did not know his birthday was on Halloween. Yes, lit. JP, I love you even more. I know, right? 
Oh my God, I love Halloween. We know. Happy birthday, JP. Okay, I'm sorry. Go you're ahead. Good. You're good. You're good. Um, happy birthday. Um, what was I about? To say? Oh yeah, just um, your hair length. Oh yeah, but I'm like this. This is too much. My mom has to do this now because I'm too lazy and it won't look. Your like mom would have had to do it anyway. See? No, no, no. When my hair. Is short, I wish short. I had a black mom. Because <laughs> I need my hair did. <laughs> when my hair is short, short, I can do it myself. But it has passed that threshold now, and this was painful. Getting this combed out was not a good time. So I'm sitting over here like, when this wedding is Lock over. Lock it up. Yeah, when this wedding is over, I'm either locking it up or I'm going to let you shave it. Either that, but I told you I'd let you give me a tattoo, so I don't know. Oh, yeah. I cannot wait. I'm going to regret that. Decision. I'm going to practice on bananas. You know, that's how they learn. So I'll practice on. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, Sydney shaved my head. I'm giving her a tattoo. Who the hoo? Shout out to the living room. We find out the best shit here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's uh, that's the that on that. Okay. Um, And then lastly, oh, oh, I want, no, not lastly, sorry. How was the your photo shoot with Malik that broke the gram? Oh, and you know what's crazy? Like, when we took it, I was like, oh, yeah, these are cool. Like, I just, you know, thought they were cool. Because, I, cause, you know, you can't really see, uh, like, even when they show you on the camera, like, some some pictures that they say, you're like, oh, yeah, those, those are cool, whatever. Like, um, I didn't know that they were going to be like as beautiful as they were to me. Um, and also it was kind of like, uh, I don't know. Like, you know, you see, you see Malik shutting the gram down with literally nothing. Like it'll be like maybe one prop and you'd be like, how did, how does this look like the most magnificent thing I've ever seen? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I wasn't prepared for people to, uh, like like it the way they did yeah. like it's being very well received yeah. uh y'all really like my under boob and my yeah. tits being out and gold jewelry and yeah yeah you're all welcome thank Mal malik kashad uh y'all better book them get them booked and busy because y'all yeah. only have like a couple weeks to do that yeah like people oh like my god like less than two weeks mm -hmm. <gasps> y'all better get them booked and busy give him some coins before he fly up out of here and get famous on you hoes i know right and then you're gonna be looking back like damn i should have supported should have booked should have booked yeah you could have said you've been shot by yeah mm -hmm. could have should so yeah hell yeah it was definitely lit it was very nice i definitely loved the uh the entire aesthetic of it i thought it was super super oh, dope thanks. we Mo were in his neighborhood we were Mm -hmm. We were in the valley. You feel mm -hmm, me? Mm -hmm. Malik has a it's a his a, like all of his pictures have a certain style and aesthetic to me yeah. when I see them, and I think that it's so cool to to be so to be still so young in it. Like I think this is his third year. I think he told me taking pictures. Yeah, and he already has a style. Like yeah. like I feel like if someone put pictures in front of me and were like, okay, which one of these is a Malik picture? I would be able to point yeah, it out. Yeah, kind of like sure. Spike Lee. If you're watching a Spike Lee film, you can go. This is some spike shit right here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I think that's really cool that he has a style that's developed already and to be so like yeah. three years. I in. wish him the very, very best. You have all of our love and support. Yes. We're gonna miss you. And um I'm gonna have to send my videos all the way to New York now. Yeah, we were just <laughs> talking about everybody uh being on everybody's things, like mm -hmm. and at everybody's award shows and mm -hmm. whatnot. So we're speaking it into existence. We're giving these words power. Yes. Uh, you know, seeing all my friends at the tippy top. It's gonna right. be exciting. Yes, absolutely. Um, and then the last thing I had for a month in review was actually like a um, a non personal thing. Okay. Um, there were these black faced pumpkins, which we talked about a little bit yesterday. Okay. So for the people who are listening, um, there is this law firm. I actually did not really, I didn't pay attention to where it was, but they um, put out these black pumpkins, and they started getting calls from people that were like, "Hey, um, offensive," and they were like, "Oop." Pull them shits off the off the uh, front porch right now, and they're sold by I think it's Bed Bath and Beyond. I yeah, tried to I think so. Okay, yeah. and but it's just online, and apparently, like since then, also they've been pulled. And so, what I really wanted to talk about with that was just this idea that because um, so I read some of the comments, and this was on like the legit. <laughs> news stations page and it was people in there like well is it racist if i have white pumpkins is is it racist if like does it mean i i also think that white pe I mean, does it mean i'm a white supremacist if i wanted to go buy white pumpkins <laughs> and i thought they looked nice with my orange pumpkins mm -hmm. and i was just like what annoys me about this is is because i get it i completely understand being on the other side of things and being like damn like it's, it's just a pumpkin but for me it's like I want people to understand when they see these things and think that people are overreacting, quote unquote, or being sensitive, that we would not be in this position if people had not have been racist from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like if blackface had never been a thing, you wouldn't have to have people driving around going, is that a black pumpkin? Is that pumpkin? a black pumpkin? <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? And so because I saw them, I was like, e I could see how this might make someone uncomfortable. Um, so, yeah, it was just when I saw it, I was like, dang, you know, I just, it was something I want to talk about. Just a quick little little um, story that I saw that I was like, wow, it just makes me sad that um, people can't that like can't believe that other people's experiences are valid. Because if we could do that, I think we'd just be farther along as a society in general. If we could go, OK, I could see that. 
I can mm. see why that hurt your feelings. Mm-hmm. I just, and I mean, and, and is it really too much that you just can't have a black pumpkin? Like, no. is that really dispositioning you so and much? And I will say that, you know, I have an aesthetic for all things black and black mm-hmm. and matte. Mm-hmm. Uh, beautiful things. Obviously, everything black is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't see anything wrong with the pumpkins mm-hmm. for me. But mm-hmm. I wouldn't say, oh, you do? <laughs> you sound stupid. Like, or I don't give a fuck about your opinion or your feelings. Because we do that so much, mm-hmm. like, in society. Like, we just tell people what they're allowed to be offended over and it's mm-hmm. like you don't have to be offended over the same things but it's just like you can still respect how people feel like especially if you're not in that community you don't get to tell me what I'm offended by that's like so many people but it's specifically racist white people want to say like oh you can't be mad at x y and z because that wasn't the intent or because I have a black neighbor or a black friend or I, I sucked a black dick like I'm not racist but you don't get to tell me what I find a, like I find offensive right and even though I don't find the pumpkins offensive, I don't also have to go out of my way and make comments about people who do find it offensive. Right. Like, you don't have anything better to do with your time today than uh, – because, mind you, oh, so many of the comments were basically po- poking fun or making light or making a joke about other instances of white supremacy or blackface. Like, oh, is it racist if I – and I'm just like, you know what, get I, your ass. I'm starting to have a very strong feeling of uh, ageism. Like, everybody 35 and up shouldn't be allowed on, like, social media. <laughs> like, they just... Mine is Bernie. <sighs> they just... Like, I think I told you the other day, um, Greta... I forgot her last name, but Greta, she's, like, the climate change activist who, like, spoke at the UN, and she's just, like, a remarkable young lady. But somebody had, like, posted, like, a picture of her yelling about, hey, y'all need to fix climate change. And it was a long post on Facebook, of course, about how... Children need to fix climate change because we're using too much air conditioning. And I'm like, you dumb motherfuckers. This is why y'all don't deserve Facebook. Y'all say too many dumb things. Like, what are you talking about? Like, Mm -hmm. why why do y'all, you didn't have anything better to do at all? Like, you couldn't have thought about a couple extra dollars you can invest in your 401k. You couldn't have, uh, like, trained to run a marathon because I know that's what older white people like to do. Um, you couldn't have like made shapes out of Rice Krispie treats for your kid's lunchbox. Like you couldn't find anything better to do than tell kids that they need to fix climate change. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, so long story short, ageism, 35 plus Facebook. I need to talk to you, bro. Um, I need you to start blocking these people from having Facebook. Yeah. Mine is Bernie Sanders. His, um, 70, whatever is the new. Oh, and that like 103 year old white woman who said all she wanted for her birthday was to get Donald Trump impeached. And I was like, I get that. <laughs> uh, same. Hell yeah. Well, you can have Facebook, is. ma'am. You, you get it. <laughs> Hell yeah. So yeah. But mind you, again, like, and because now as you were talking about it, like, I, I wonder, because I think that when there's already a context around something, it changes how you might perceive it. Mm-hmm. So like, if, there, if somebody else hadn't already called uh, and been like, hey, blackface, I probably would have just been like, black pumpkins. I would have, yeah, I actually would have been lit for it because I love black. Yeah, so. Hell yeah, black is way better than orange. Yeah, it's hard to tell how you would actually feel if there's no context. Like, because, and and everything has so much now. Which I think is something to be conscious of too. Like, a lot of times we bandwagon get offended by something. Okay. Because, like, um, the young girl who who, uh, was in the H&M ad, um, she was a young black girl. I think she was like seven or eight. But the aesthetic of the entire shoot was for everybody to have messy hair because it was. The, the the goal was mm-hmm. to make it look like because they they shot the children like after they got home from school like they mm-hmm. picked the kids up from school they brought them to the H M uh, studio they took the photos so like all the kids had like recess hair like mm-hmm. looking crazy like clothes almost like leaning you know mm-hmm. like half wearing their clothes basically hair all messed up and everybody was mad because the black girl's hair was messed up but I'm like everybody's hair was messed up mm-hmm. you know little little baby Susan over here has a messy bun uh, little mixed girl Molly over here got you know her curls all over the place. And a black girl, because her edges aren't slicked down, it was like everybody was so mad about it. And I'm like, are you really mad about it? Because do not, don't kids come home looking the fuck crazy? Like, right. I understand that, like, maybe it's not a statement for you, but I'm like, honestly, you're just telling on your own self hate because 
you're mad at this little girl for not having straight edges. Right. And, and she is a clearly a natural 4C textured hair. So really all you're saying is, hey, I hate 4C textured hair. And so I'm mad about this photo. Because right. when I saw it, I just thought, yeah, all you kids look like y'all done got roughed around on the playground. Like right. y'all all look a mess to me. Right. But not like a mess like y'all look crazy. I just y'all look like kids. Right. And we need to let kids be kids. You see all these parents dressing their children like fuck boys and fuck girls and wearing matching whatever the fuck outfits. I'm like, listen, this little baby want to be in some granables, granimals and <laughs> fuck some tennis shoes up on the playground. They're right. not worried about wearing this designer shit and wearing belly shirts and right. shit like that. Like, let kids be kids, man. Yeah, and it's, I mean, I think that the, the same mentality is that like you get from people who say shit like, we don't need any more slavery movies. And I'll be like, let me tell you something. We need all the slavery movies. <laughs> Because if y'all could still make jokes about that shit on the internet, talking about if slavery had been around and Snapchat was around, <sighs> then this would have been going on. And in the slavery, quote unquote, reality shows and shit. And I'm like, let me tell y'all something. If you can make a joke about this, we need many, many, many more slavery movies. But it's the, the problem is that, because um, I think even with that, I think it was because of people are worrying about how we're seen. It, but it's like, this is a part of our experience, too. Our children go outside and they play and they, they look mm-hmm. like this at some point. It's yeah. like they go to school looking nice. And you could be mad. Yeah, when they get home, you see all them, all them first day of school for kindergartner photos. Them shits were hilarious to me. Cause I, I see those. Oh my, it was the first day of school. So was, this was like back in August. Like everybody was first posting their kids before and after their first day of school, oh, coming mm-hmm. home looking a hot ass mess. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, oh, this word. is why you don't even need to worry about spending all that designer money on kids. For one, they're going to outgrow them shits okay. next week. And for okay. two, they don't give a fuck. They'll go make mud pies in some Chanel sneakers and call right. it a day. And, they, don't be, give and a fuck. they shouldn't care about that. They should just. They, be no, kids. they shouldn't even have to. Yeah. Like, let kids be kids. So but yeah, that was a very long tangent. But it was coming back to saying, like, are you actually offended by some things? Or are you offended because other people are offended? Which is okay, but it's just like, be more conscious and try to have your own opinion on things. Yeah, but right. also be mindful that you don't have to bash somebody else's feelings mm-hmm. because you're not also offended. Yeah. That doesn't really well, make because much Because you sense. just don't get it. And because if you don't get it, maybe you could go do some research. Like, i.e., all these people that were under these comments being, oh, wait, is this racist? Maybe you should go, like, maybe just go look up blackface. Do you even actually know where it comes from or what it is? Yeah. Or do you just under here being And I mean, ignorant? and when you think about it, a lot of people don't. Yeah. They have no idea what it means to have blackface. Yeah. A lot of a lot of kids, especially when you think about what's in their history books, they don't right. even know why saying the N word is racist. They right. don't know why they can't sing it in a song. Right. Like they don't get it. They don't know why they can't have cornrows and baby hairs and on fleek and this and a third. Like they don't get it. Yeah. Like I don't I don't know. It's just like why like uh, y'all got to understand we're all about to be one big old mixed race. Like why can't we take some time to learn, understand, respect each other's cultures? You know what's crazy? Me and Kalia are going to have a conversation about this later. It was this idea that um we're going to have to adopt a human culture in order to survive essentially and it, it was saying that we we're going to have to rid ourselves of all distinction. There can be no racial distinction, no distinction amongst the genders or anything because it, it really just having the distinction alone leads to chauvinism. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking about it and I was like, it's crazy because at first I'd be like, oh, that's not going to happen. But then when you look at what's happening in our world, like how they, like for instance, they predict that by 2050, everybody's going to be brown. If you look at um, the age, gender clothing that all of these different brands are starting to put out now, mm-hmm. it's like it actually is starting to unfold piece by piece and little bit by little bit, of course, with resistance because there's always resistance to change. But I was like, damn. Damn, it actually, if we're here long enough, um, mm-hmm. it actually really might have been a possibility that... I mean, we're not going to make it to 2050, no, but not. I digress. But, you know, <laughs> if we would have. I was like, damn, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's, so, it's like GQ just did a men in makeup issue. Did you uh-huh. see that? No. Yeah, it was like the dude the dude with the dreads from... Um, the only guy that I, I would recognize from it was the black kid with the dreads from... Um, Locks. Locks? Yeah. Oh, you think dreads a negative term? I think that other people think it's a negative thing. Oh, okay. And I respect that. I think if I had them, I would not want them to be called Jared. Okay. I I respect that. Locks. Mm-hmm. Um, people, with, oh, it's the kid with the locks from um, Gronish. Luca. Oh, Luke. that fine boy? Mm-hmm. Wait, is he old enough for me to call him fine? I he think was he's dating one of the Kardashians at one point. Well, that means absolutely nothing. <laughs> but he, um, like they have a great moral standard. Uh, he was, he was in the issue like with makeup and everything. And then they were talking about, so he had like legit eyeshadow on and all mm. that shit, but they were talking about how, um, what's the dude's name from black Panther? The one that was in get out. He wore Fenty to a, um, red carpet event and looked magnificent. Like his skin looked I don't the know. dark skin guy. The one everybody thinks is fine from get out. 
From Black Panther? Oh, Daniel. Yeah. Uh, it's like an African Kalua. name. Right? Kaluuya. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know how to say it. I'm I don't sorry. Know I apologize. But yeah, no, he is fine. Yeah, he had on Fenty and they were just saying that, yeah, we're, we're going in a direction Like where, what? Oh, Foundation? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's because Fendi is Yeah, it's I know. Phenomenal. But it's just this idea that men are in makeup and it's And shout out to Rihanna for thing. having all these skin tones. And shout out to Rihanna <laughs> for creating an empire. Yes, Sorry, Rihanna. Tangent, I want you to have tangent, all the coins tangent. you need. You're right. I'm going to Sephora today just because you said it. Actually, I just bought a $40 Fenty brush. I won't be getting anything Fenty for a while. Oh, but it is a phenomenal know. brush. So if y'all need a foundation brush, get that. I would just like is... to say I'm thankful that I don't wear makeup because $40 <laughs> for a brush? What the fuck? Hey, yeah. you know, people spend money on things that are, they... It's like Cindy's a... mouth touched the microphone. <laughs> It's like a <laughs> visceral reaction to like want to wipe your mouth, but it's not gonna get it off. Like, no, I believe it does. Oh, you think so? Mm-hmm. To wipe it wipes some bacteria right and germs <laughs> right away. <laughs> Just wipe it on your sleeve. <laughs> okay, so that was it for my month in review. Okay, uh, sorry for all our tangents. Twenty five minutes of tangents. <laughs> I feel like our last couple episodes we haven't had a lot of yeah, tangents. So you Kalia here. So you know what? We can have some tangents. Yeah. Have you get a tangent? You get a tangent. You get a tangent. Let's see if we can make it throughout the show without any more. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. So my um, month in review is a shout out to the one and only, which I am actually impressed with myself for even. <laughs> is that me? <laughs> ah! Is that me? It ain't me. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, the one and only Michael Jordan. So Michael Jordan has donated $7.2 million to Novant Health to serve <laughs> eyebrow raise to serve uninsured and underinsured patients in the Charlotte community. The first one was open on Freedom Drive. The next one will be open on Statesville Avenue, um, which I thought was really cool because we, of course, never hear about anything Michael Jordan does for the community, which I'm not here to tell you what to do with your coins, but he never broadcasts anything he does for the community. Yeah. And it seems like he doesn't because we don't see it. We don't hear it. We're like, yeah, you what own the Hornets. You uh, uh, like own the shoes on everybody's feet. Uh, like, what do you do for us besides take $250 from the same pair of tennis shoes you keep selling over and over? That and, and then you hear like he had donated money to like law enforcement but then he also donated to like it, he donated it was like he donated to both sides i cannot remember exactly yeah. what the terms were and i don't want to so y'all yeah. please fact check me but i'm pretty sure it was like michael jordan donates money to police and then i think i feel like he did that first and then i think that people were like what the fuck and he was like michael jordan donates money to and black listen, lives matter i know you love your snow bunnies but guess what yo children them seeds is still gonna be black so mm. but i i have to say that i i don't ever hear about the the good that he does. And mm. I don't necessarily hear about the bad. Like, I don't think that I heard anything about the police thing. Mm. Um, and I didn't read that or see that. But, you know, giving credit where credit is due, I think that's really dope. You know, it's a very sad place where people literally, you're literally, it's mandatory to drive a car to have car insurance. So people literally have to pay for car insurance over health insurance. Literally, people have to make that decision. Do I drive illegally and not have car insurance? Or do I have, you know, health insurance for my family? Like, what can I say is more important? What makes more sense for me and my family? And people, so many people won't go to the doctor when, you know, they're having severe pains. And obviously, black people, more than anybody else, are being basically murdered and neglected in in, uh, physician care because they don't listen to black people anyway. So um, I think that's really dope that he opened those centers. It's called the Novant. Michael Jordan Family Clinic. Yeah, put your name or something all like in that. There. <laughs> yeah, like Michael Jordan Family. <laughs> right. But I mean, um, you know, shout out to him. Yeah, I have nothing bad to say. About yeah, that. no, I was, I was uh, proud of that. And also, I didn't know that um, one of his entire season's paychecks was like donated to like nine eleven relief oh, efforts wow, or yeah, something like yeah. that for like a whole year, a whole year's uh, salary or something like that. Nice. But I thought that was really cool. So yeah. um, I'm actually gonna that, since it's been open, which I think it's only been open for three weeks, mm-hmm. maybe four now because I think this came out last week. Um, but it had already served over three hundred families in Charlotte. Oh, so wow, nice. That's really cool. It is. The Panthers would be proud. Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. I thought um, that was really really cool because you know so and. In, Kalia talked about this. Mm-hmm. I don't know if she talked about it on the show, but she was basically saying that there was a study done at Harvard, or she didn't say at Harvard, but it was at Harvard, um, about basically kids being born into poverty in Charlotte, like have like basically all of the odds st- stacked against them that mm-hmm. they're not going to make it out of mm-hmm. poverty and not going to make it out of Charlotte. She talked about it on here, yeah. Okay, cool. So that was part of the reason why he wanted to invest that money here. Obviously, also, he lives here. His team is here. It's yeah. important for him to do philanthropy work in his community, but... 
Um, I think for that reason specifically, it's very yeah. important. Like we shouldn't, it's very sick that we're quote unquote the richest, you know, nation in the world, but people can't afford healthcare where yeah. other countries have free healthcare. Like yeah. that should be something that I feel like we pay plenty of money for roads and you have toll booths, you have all of these things. You take out most people's checks for taxes okay. and we can't even have our health needs taken care of. Yeah. Like we're not trying to run to the doctor cause we ripped the fingernail. Like, and even Some of us are did. really, like, really suffering, yeah. and you just have to suck it up because you're like, yeah, but I can't afford to go to the doctor. Like, right. even if, even if my, um, like, I remember even even when I had health insurance, like to me, like spending any money that was like wasn't completely necessary, like I couldn't do it. Like, oh, if you go to the doctor, it's only like a twenty five dollar, you know, deductible. I'm like, yeah, but I don't have twenty five dollars to go to the doctor every time. Like, I gotta put gas in my car. Like, you have to make those decisions in America, and that makes me very, very sad. So I'm very happy that he took his millions of coins to put towards that, which is really cool. Um, but the center also is gonna have, uh, or also already has, like behavioral health experts, oral health practitioners, and physical therapy too. Oh, that's lit. So um, I thought that was pretty dope. And I'm like, people can, you know, get a lot of their needs met through this yeah, facility. Absolutely. So that's really important. Shout out to Michael Jordan for doing that for the community and his family. He was talking about um, during the ribbon cutting ceremony that basically like, uh, he's like, I don't have to hear it like from my mom or from my daughter, from, you know, like my family. I don't have to keep hearing like that. These are things that need to be done because it's important to me too. like, you mm-hmm. know, whatever. So I think that's really dope. He was a he was emotional at the ribbon cutting se- ceremony. He was like crying a little bit. So I was like, OK, well, you know, we can only judge people for what they're bringing to the table now. Yeah. Like we always have to be open to evolution. Yeah. I mean, and, um, and what I was going to say was even if he did give to the police and even if he still stands by that, because it looked like he gave to like when I pulled it up just now, it looked like he gave to the NAAC. PLDF. I didn't get a chance to okay. look into what that meant, but it basically was like a law enforcement division, like a it seemed like a black oriented mm-hmm. trying to fix the problems between the police and the African American community, trying mm-hmm. to like lower some of these killings of black people yeah. type thing. Which is, I mean, it's important. Which I is, don't know how well your coins are really going to help those relationships, but if it does help, that's awesome and that's needed. Yeah. So it might not have been that he gave to the police at all, but what I was going to say was even if he did, um, I just remember reading um, it was why another reason why I'm such a big fan of Huey P. Newton is him saying that basically you have to evaluate modes of thinking mm-hmm. and you can do that independent of the person. Like just because the person might not might be trash don't mean they don't have good ideas or even can do good things so like let's say let's say um michael jordan was like literally like blue lives matter but if he gives money and he makes this institution that's going to help black people i can independently say this is this is good yeah and this is a good thing i ain't gotta like you but i can like the things you do for the community so yeah yeah, even if he if he did so, maybe put that yeah. if in there. I yeah, but yeah, that's dope. That's I, dope. I uh, grew up really loving uh, Michael Jordan, so like getting older and yeah. seeing that he, or uh, apparently seeing that he didn't do a lot for the community, definitely made me sad. But again, we don't know, and it's not people don't have to broadcast when they yeah, do good. Absolutely. So absolutely proud of at least seeing his name on this because that you know gives me hope in him. Yeah, and I his, grew up loving Michael Jordan too. Number one because he was fine. Oh what? Yeah, like and in the he 90s. is still fine to me. That chocolate skin, really? And he's yes. not cute to me anymore. No, but he's so fine. He's so in his like 20s, just dark he was and beautiful. At, like, Chapel Hill, and he had that hoop earring. Or he was oh yeah, hoop. that one go hoop, and mm-hmm. he still wear that go hoop. Even God, when he, he like so when those pictures me. of him, when he got all those rings on his finger, and he's doing like the Malcolm X thing. I'm yeah. just like he's fine so fine. Man. Mm-hmm. That and he was in Space Jam. He's Hello. still fine to me. And when he was like at the ribbon care, uh, cutting ceremony, he said something something. My kids, my mom, my brothers. Uh, my grandbaby. I said, um, excuse me, what? Mm-hmm. Grandbaby. Right. What? Yeah. Oh, damn it. So, yeah, but I, I didn't Chance I, is gone. I was already not trying to date a man with kids, but grandchildren, I draw the line. Oh, okay. That's where the line is. Gotcha. <laughs> um, and I also had this, I had this, uh, damn VHS, it, Michael. I had this VHS tape called, uh, Fly With Michael or something like that. And it was just all about him basically being a phenomenal basketball player. Mm. And just seeing him float through the air in slow motion is just very, it's beautiful. It's an aesthetic, I feel. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I love Michael Jordan. And then I heard he was selfish. And I was like, well, this is unfortunate. And you know what? I feel like you always hear that they're like certain people are mean to, but I'm like, you probably ran up to this man while he was eating his Belgian waffle somewhere with his family, trying to, trying to take a selfie. It's just like, motherfucker, get out of my face. I too would say that. So if you want to say that I also am rude, that would be a okay with me <laughs> because so many celebrities will get on Instagram and be like, I did that because you mushed my child in the face and didn't even say, excuse me and ask for a photo, like interrupting my family time. I wouldn't explain a goddamn thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. I said it, and okay. I was trying to eat my Belgian waffle. As long as you stand by what you do, yeah, I feel you. All right. I said what I said. Okay. Hell yeah. 
Um, that is all for my month in review. Alrighty, that wraps up month in review, and now we're on to Blank Wild Black, right? Yes. Alrighty. Um, I have one. Okay. I think I lied earlier and said I didn't have one, but I only have one. Oh, go for it. Okay. Um. So, McDonald's. Oh dear. God. <laughs> is um apologizing now for their Halloween decorations. Um, there was a store in Massachusetts that had, uh, you know, happy, happy Halloween decorations, pumpkins, spooky cats and trees and things. Um, and the, this decoration in particular was right at the cash register. And, uh, one of the people that was, uh, talking to the news journalist was like, oh yeah, at first I saw it and I was like, oh cool, you know, Halloween decorations, whatever, nothing to see here. And as he got closer to place his order, he noticed that there was like a hanging body silhouette oh, in the tree. I knew it. I knew it. And <sighs> was it black? I mean, the whole it was a silhouette, so it was you know a black tree. Oh. Like it's it's not yeah, it was like oh, a like silhouette, a, like a cutout looking. Yeah, thing. yeah, oh. yeah. And it, yeah, it was a hanging silhouette of a body. And it's just like <sighs> even even if you just had no historical context, even if you just crawled out from your rock in the Caucasus Mountains yesterday, you think that a hanging body in a tree is appropriate for a family establishment, like a restaurant? Like, you think that that's okay? It's at, like, baby eye level. Like, it's at, you know, it's at hip level for adults. But obviously you see it when you're walking up, and it's just like, you thought that would be appropriate, I don't know, anywhere besides a haunted house? Like, a hanging body in a tree? Or Let alone the historical context of it all. Which it was weird to me anyway, because it was in Massachusetts, which there were no recorded uh, recordings of lynchings in Massachusetts. So mm-hmm. it's just like... Who a okay this? Once again, we're going back to education, and when you're not educated, obviously you do ignorant, stupid things. You you saw this, whatever your ma- what, whoever manager, or whoever, because McDonald's was like, yeah, we didn't approve any of that, we didn't get the a okay. Of course, they would say that even if they did. Um, but right. it's just like, what manager saw this and was like, hey, Tyler, come put this stuff on the cash register. This will look great for Halloween. Like, you didn't see this hanging body. Like, cause it's not like, oh, that could be. So do you remember? Well, okay, so when we went to New York. Excuse me, L.A. Mm-hmm. And we went to that art exhibit that had the the silhouettes. Mm-hmm. It was like that kind of. Mm-hmm. So to me, when I saw it, it was more like I know that some people can see things and, and not be offended, like we just talked about. Mm-hmm. But when I saw that, I was like, oh, oh no, no, mm-hmm. no, 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 because uh, mm-hmm. like you just you just had to uh, go to sleep and put your head in your backpack the entire February. The only time they talk about Black history, if you didn't see that and and be struck as this is racist. And see, for me, though, I, I feel like how you feel about the pumpkins. I would be like, eh, that could be something else. But, even, but that's, so that was my point, that even if it wasn't about, uh, like, race, mm-hmm. it's still a hanging dead body in a tree. Like, this is, this is yeah, a restaurant actually, where they still have play places. Actually, never, now that you say that, I think they should have just went with something like a ghost or something. Yeah, kind like a, a like a white, not white sheet, because this could go wrong, too. Right. I don't know, just a pumpkin. God damn it. Like, why do y'all... Uh, yeah. because you fuck up so ferociously <laughs> in history, everything must be questioned about your intentions and what we do from here forward. Yeah. I don't even know how I feel about seeing a white ghost in a sheet because, my God, white people in sheets are terrifying. Right. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? <sighs> yeah. Now, yeah. Like I, and now that you say it again, I'm like actually hanging dead body. I'm actually going to show it to you. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh yeah, so it's striking, right? <laughs> yeah. I can't so I actually tried to look up not not very hard, obviously, but I tried to look up who the artist was of that um the exhibit that we saw in LA at oh, the yeah, yeah. at the museum. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't remember oh, what because it was it. a woman, right? Yep. And I could not remember her name, but I was like, if I could pull that up and I might post it in in the um, living room Instagram so people can see what I'm talking about. about. But when I find that artist, I'm gonna post the two pictures side by side of like just a piece of her artwork because it's it's very striking, it's very thought provoking, uh, it's very intense. Her artwork is very intense. I remember being like feeling very heavy in that room. Kara Walker. Kara Walker. K K A R. Kara Walker. She had a a really um, interesting exhibit. It was. pre during and post civil war yep, artwork yep. and it was open to interpretations mm-hmm. um which we'll post and we'll have a chat about it in the living room uh yeah. instagram or my instagram yeah. cindy's instagram Her art is is fire it was Ooh, phenomenal. it's striking it's yeah. uh in, it's intense i feel like you gotta whew, walk around in a bubble of sage before you walk yeah up in that and it was like the way it was set up like she had some things were like they were like table size and they were all like that like almost like cutouts of black paper yeah. but then some of it was literally like a mural like it was like all the around whole, the wall uh, yeah and exactly when i saw that photo of the decorations at mcdonald's i was like 
this is intense to me. Mm-hmm. Like, I am not okay with this. I think okay it's the black on white that makes I, it so striking. I would have taken a photo, but then I would have ripped it off because mm-hmm. I'd be like, this is going to the news and then this is coming with me because right. this is not going to be seen by nobody else. <laughs> Right, right. No, black on black for you, Sid. Um, um. Oh, it was an update. On oh, wait. The- I apologize. Blank while black for you. Mm. Um, uh, it was an update on the Amber Geiger case. Again, oh. for anybody who might not have listened to previous episodes or just does not recognize that name, it is the Dallas. I keep forgetting. It's Dallas, yeah, right? It's yeah, it's Dallas. Dal- the former Dallas police officer who walked into Botham Jean. I think I pronounced his name wrong last yeah, podcast. Yeah, I think it's okay. Um, walked into this black man's house mistakenly after a long, tiring day of work and then shot him, an unarmed black man in his own home who was apparently just eating ice cream and watching some tunes or watching, I'm watching some tunes, watching some TV, um, who was sentenced to 10 years um, for, was it manslaughter or murder? Uh, manslaughter, it, I'm sure. It, no, it was murder. A word? Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, but um her so I wanted to update everybody and just talk about this this idea of um self condemnation. So uh where I'm going with this is is that now her lawyers have um put in an appeal for her case. Now you have to I was reading an article earlier that says you have to do that within thirty days, I think, of sentencing in order to do it at all. Um now mind you again, I don't know if this was an independent act or if this was sanctioned by Miss Geiger herself. But I was like, for this white woman to be saying, or for anybody to be saying, I feel so bad, the fact that I get to hang out with my family, knowing that he'll never see his again, and <sighs> I just am so remorseful, and I'm crying my white woman tears Ugh, in court. Mug of white to tears. To then allow sanction be a party to um, an appeal of, an, of a case that you only got 10 years for, and are literally going to be el- eligible, eligible for parole in 2024. Now, I know we kept talking about that on the podcast, but I literally read it in black and white today when I was reading that article, and I was like, wow, really? Five years, and you will be able to be back on the streets again for killing someone Mm -hmm. of any race. But I was just like, the fact that you claim to be so remorseful, it's like, why can't you sit your ass in jail for your five years then? Why are you literally okay? I would be, if you're so remorseful, you shouldn't you be like, no, 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 don't file an appeal. I got what I got. I'm remorseful. Let me go sit in jail. Yeah, because you fully have that right. Because I would be like, no, I don't want to do that. Oh, well, we're going to do it. I'm like, well, you're fired. Right. (laughs) (laughs) I just... You're so remorseful. And and not only that, but I'm like, in your career as a police officer, or clearly racist police officer, how many people's lives did you ruin? How many people who's... Not that you could sentence them, but how many people did you wrongfully or unjustly or immorally arrest and, and put in the position to go to jail or prison or whatever... How many people did you do that to and not lose one wink of sleep? Right. If you think I give a flying frog about your five five years that you're going to serve or less, you have me sorely mistaken for right. somebody else. And so where I was going with the self-condemnation thing is that I read, I, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I think it's Sartre. It's either S-A-R-T-R-E or S-A-T-R-E. He's a philosopher. And um, Sophie Carmichael brought him up and he was like, um, Sartre says that we can't be self-condemning. Essentially, we can't take responsibility for our own actions. It's mm-hmm. just like human flaw. And I was just like, kind of like we were talking about it yesterday, like watching, I was rewatching When They See Us. Mm-hmm. And there's a part in the, in the, in the, um, the four part miniseries where the um, prosecutor is like basically looking at the detective going, girl, we don't have a case. Like um, yeah. their DNA is not on her. The DNA is not in the sock. We found a sock full of semen. It's none of their DNA. <sighs> they, I, and then she's like, well, it's the sixth person, the one that got away. And she's like looking at her like, you don't really believe that. And I'm like, if this really happened somewhere, if y'all was really sitting up in an office somewhere having this conversation, why could you not go? Let's just drop these charges. Let's um, let's re- let's let's call a mistrial or whatever. How the fuck that? system works right until we can get our shit together instead of being so um egotistical and having to win i suppose and having to make a make a um a name for yourself out here that you were willing to let these boys go to prison for something that you didn't even think they did if this mm-hmm. if this uh four-part miniseries is like true or like you know what i'm saying i'm just sitting here like wow we really cannot just take a step back and go that was wrong this is wrong let's stop now Amber Geiger, I, I should just go to jail. I killed a man. I'm only going for five years. My God. I'm not trying to say five years in jail don't feel like a long ass time because if I'm, she's treated. Uh, one day would seem too long for me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So if she's treated like I hear that most people are treated in prison, having no um, freedom whatsoever, being told when to eat, when to go to your cell, when to go to sleep, when to wake up, when to shower, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then I'm sure that feels like a long time. But my God, like people literally go, go to jail for life for selling drugs. Mm-hmm. Nonviolent drug offenses. Mm-hmm. Because they got three strikes, they're going to be in there forever. And you can't sit your ass in there for five years Mm -hmm. but yet you're so remorseful i was so annoyed when i saw that shit i was like appeal 
Well, and you my know, that's voice. that. Oh, judge, look at I read that Bible you gave me. Thanks for the hug. I feel better. I'm remorseful. I would like to not do jail at all. Thanks. Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. So that is my blank while black. Um, Amber Geiger and just if, if you're somewhere and you just, can hear this, I'm just. Oh, I don't want to slap fire out her ass. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, so that's it for me. Um, it sounds about white next. It sounds about height. Did you say you didn't have one, right? Yeah, no, I do. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, you do, you do. Yes. Mm-hmm. Sydney. <laughs> Take a gander, any gander at all about where we're traveling to this week. Texas? Texas! <laughs> Fort Worth again! <laughs> God damn! Wait, who's it? Which one is Fort Worth? Fort Worth was uh, just with uh, a Tatiana Jefferson. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, let me tell y'all something. I had my heart set on moving to Texas. Y'all can keep y'all raggedy state. Yeah, I kept hearing such nice things. Uh, we, it was a farce. It was like, I feel like how I feel about Texas is how most people felt about Kamala Do Harris. Do we have any Texas listeners? I, I don't. I don't. Maybe, maybe I one. Couldn't, I, I, when I was looking at it, I couldn't see if there was any in Texas. I couldn't see the map at all, actually. Oh, I'll have to show you. I'll show you how to get to it. Okay. Um, Sorry if you're in Texas and you actually like it there, because I have read nothing but hard things. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking about the, the, the rise and fast demise of Kamala Harris, how she, like, came out, I'm running for president. And it was like, you don't like trans people. You put black men in jail. Sit your ass down. And everybody was like, ooh. And so then she just declined amongst the people. Mm-hmm. And that's how I feel about Texas. It went, I heard great things about Texas. Fast uh, upward mobility or upward thought about Texas. And then I heard all this shit we've been talking about. And I'm like, ooh, never it's mind. All, <laughs> and you know what? It's Fort, we- Fort Worth and Dallas like a motherfucker. Like, it's just back and forth between these two. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, next week, I'm not even going to stress myself about looking for anything. I'm literally just going to search Fort Worth news. Right. <laughs> all okay. right. So I'm actually going to play it and see if we can hear it, uh, like, in our recording. Okay. Um, but let's start with, uh, this woman. We must shame her name. So Samantha Ely, come to the friends. This bitch, 38 years old, probably looks about 68, um, was charged for impersonating a public servant because this is what this dumb bitch did. There was a group, maybe in the video, it looks like about maybe 10 Latina, uh, teenagers. They're playing on a giant swing set. This is at a public, uh, park. They're playing on this giant swing set. And just one girl on the swing. It's like a giant swing that could probably fit like four people. But it's one girl on it, and her friends are like pushing her on the swing. They're laughing, recording. This woman comes over, starts screaming at them, stop, stop, stop. Get off. Get the fuck out. Blah, blah, blah. This is for children. You need to leave if you're not here to play as a child. Mm-hmm. The kids are like, um, but we are playing children Mm -hmm. she's like how old are you the girl's like "Uh, i'm 16 then you don't need to be here you need the fuck out this is for children this is for like 12 year olds whatever like you need to get the fuck out and they're like um like why they're like why is she cussing at us like why is she cursing at us and she's like i am a pd you need to get the fuck out or i will arrest you and you will be charged as an adult why her name now has been dubbed swing set susan (laughs) <laughs> why swing set susan do you think that she would be tried as an adult like that's what they say to kids who like murder she's on a fucking swing set at I, a public park i wasn't gonna say do they even do that in texas but it sounds so shitty down there they probably do like charge 16 year olds as uh, adults Ooh, uh, came up and, with that and, and i think that's like for certain offenses like oh, certainly okay, certain maybe. violent offenses right. like i think like maybe like things that like, are like you know really bad yeah like um i know they did it in like in new york with um with king cory yeah because he was 17 I think, yeah but i 16? yeah again i don't know the exact rules of that but either it doesn't fucking matter yeah. because swings at susan is not a public defender yeah, yeah, yeah she's yeah. just a fucking idiot mm-hmm. also she was recorded the same day at the same park yelling at her fellow whites but not yelling, I'm a police officer, you need to get the fuck off the property, you need to leave now, like screaming, you need to get out of this goddamn park, da, da, da. screaming in this child's face, first of all, had I seen that video of my youngin getting screamed at, I'm coming down to that park and I'm whooping ass. <laughs> but this lady, so earlier in the day, I don't know if it was earlier after actually, but it's the same video, she's wearing the exact same outfit, um, but she skips somebody in line who was waiting to use this swing. It is for, allegedly it was for uh, six years old and younger, something like mm-hmm. that. You see a couple waiting with their daughter who's like the daughter is like sitting on the floor like 
Like she has been, like she's exhausted. She has waited long enough for this slot, for the swing. <laughs> so uh, I guess uh, swings at Susan goes over, gets in front of them, starts swinging her youngin. The parents are like, "Hey, like we've been waiting. What are you doing?" And she's like, "Yeah, this is um out of your kid's age group. You need to go over there and do, get on the other part of the playground." And they're like, what? Like, she just looks at the child, assumes that she knows the child's age. You, this is out of the child's play. This is for six-year-olds. How old is your child? And they were like, our daughter is seven. Okay, exactly. She cannot be on this. The woman who's recording walks over to a pole that has a sign that says, this is for ages five to 12. <laughs> and the lady, so Swing Set Susan also says, yeah, she needs to go on the other part. Um, I own this park. So, yeah, there's that. And they're like, you, you own this park that was built by the city uh and she's like yeah and like well the sign says from five to twelve so if you built the park shouldn't you know the age ranges she said well maybe i need more, more advice <laughs> so apparently swing set susan brought her young in who i don't know was six or six or younger i guess to the park completely intoxicated from mimosas with her girlfriends because she sounds a hot ass mess <laughs> she's clearly intoxicated but thank god she got arrested for what she did which seems extreme but it's like you blatantly went out of your way to run up to young girls. They're 16 years old. Who gives a fuck? They're at a park. Wouldn't you rather 16-year-olds be at a park? Like, isn't that what we want out of kids, to be outside playing? Mm -hmm. Because that's all they were doing. They weren't fucking on a swing set. They were swinging on a swing set. Like, (laughs) what is the problem? Why are you so mad? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to play the video. Hopefully you guys can hear it. If not, you can simply hashtag swing set Susan or Google swing set Susan. Um... The video to me was funny because I was like, I know 16-year-old Aisha would not have been here for it. But I'm about to play the video so that y'all can hear how fucking ridiculous this lady is. Hopefully you guys can hear it. (laughs) We are children. And shit like oh god Again, i can arrest bold. i can arrest you as an adult first of all that's not even a thing you can't arrest somebody as an adult because they're not an adult you can maybe charge someone as an adult you cannot arrest them as an adult that doesn't make actually any sense at right, all right so swing set susan i'm actually not going to call you that because i want everybody to know your real name so they can go egg your house your name is samantha ely uh you're 38 years old you need to grow up maybe not have mimosas so early because you clearly can't handle your liquor or whatever the fuck was going on, meth, whatever the hell you were doing. Yeah. You don't need to be going to no goddamn park yelling at kids. Yeah, you don't know. People are bold when they and be talking And first of all, you know like how that. crazy kids are these days? They should have whooped your ass. Because there was like 20 of them. But they were literally like, Jenny, let's just go. But w- you heard that loud, like, clapping. Mm-hmm. She clapped in this little girl's face. And that would have been enough for me. Because if the air from your clap got <laughs> to my face and whisked my hair in any way or lack thereof... <laughs> I'm whooping ass. Are you nuts? <laughs> you could, you do not talk to people that way, but let alone, what was that bothering you? Cause she was clearly on the other side of the park, saw children, I don't know, enjoying life, uh, being kids mm-hmm. and ran up on them. I will arrest you. Get the fuck out of here. If you're not here to play as a child, which they were literally just playing as children. <laughs> <laughs> like again, they were not fucking on the swing set. They yeah. were swinging. Yeah. <laughs> and it was only one person. Wow. Mm-hmm. She said, actually, 13 and younger. Like, girl, where did you even come up with that number? She's making shit up. Because you did. She just makes shit up. <laughs> Watch whiteness work. She just makes shit up. But thankfully, she has been charged mm-hmm. for impersonating a public defender mm-hmm. and faces up to 10 years in prison mm-hmm. and a $10,000 fine. She ain't going to. She is probably not going to do either one of those two things. Yeah. But she was clearly intoxicated good, in public. Though. And and thankfully, and funny enough, she did this to white people, too, not in the same intensity and not impersonating cop. But she did impersonate a, um, a public park owner, whatever the fuck that means. So <laughs> it, it clearly, like, 
like at least at the very least white people can see this as well and be like yeah no she had lost her marbles because she told my little white child they couldn't get on a swing right. she was seven <laughs> right. so if seven-year-olds can't get on swings 13 year olds 16 year olds can't get on swings who can i don't know who the fuck can apparently only her five-year-old kid or whoever the fuck yeah. she was at the park with i think that's what she wanted just her child to have some she's nuts yeah. she is nutty fort worth get it together y'all <laughs> do black people like live there for real for real like, I know y'all get drugged by horses and things there, but do y'all live there? I hope not. Cause, I mean, Texas is all together. Except for, like, where is it? I that? thought Texas was black as There's fuck, to be honest. There's one place that is. is it, uh, it's not Austin. Oh, it's uh, Houston. Houston is black as fuck. I don't know shit about Houston but Beyonce. There you go. But she could have been the only black. I have no idea. Like I don't know blacks, shit about I think in Houston. I don't know shit about Texas except for all this hoary, all these horrid things I hear. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that is my sounds about white. All right. So sex expectations? expectations do you have one yes yes i do um i actually have two oh shit well one of them is more of a statement okay go ahead um i think that big mouth on netflix (sighs) should be a documentary that all children are forced to watch what yeah no even though it's not my young even though it's rated mature um that shit is horrific anything with cartoons and porn it's too much no it's not porn it basically is it has walking uteruses don't it no, it's got walking penises. Oh, oh, excuse me, <laughs> scrotums. My bad. Um, it, the reason why though is because like it, I just watch it and I'd be like, if this had been out when I was a child, I just feel like I would have been much more prepared. You'd for been much more vulgar adulthood. Which I mean, you would benefit off from because then I wouldn't be so grossed out when you say things. <laughs> no, I think if I would watch it, it would have been canceled out. I'd probably be holy. <laughs> <laughs> um, because what was it? I was oh, they did a whole episode on like Planned Parenthood and why it's not an abortion factory, and uh-huh. like they literally have a kid say shit like yeah, that. Yeah, people literally think that's what Planned Parenthood yeah. is. Yeah, and so yeah, there's, there's like a kid in the show going, "That's an abortion factory," and then the girls are like, "No, it's not. That's literally like the the smallest amount of the shit they do there." And there's like a whole episode on like, and it's so it was so creative how they did it. They were talking about different contraception, but they did it like so. It's like a girl, but it's like on the it's like the Bachelor and the contraception are her options mm. if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And they're each like going through things. And I was the, raised that the only contraception is, is abstinence. abstinence. Yeah. So yeah, that wasn't. Even <laughs> and this a, is also your only sex education yeah right that wasn't even an option on there but it's funny because in the show she pulls up she wasn't even an option yeah then she <laughs> chooses the pull out method and then her mom breaks onto the set and she's like no 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 hell no you're using the condom and you're using the birth control and they're both like yeah and then yeah walk over double to up people yeah and then they, they, like the condom literally says that double up yeah and it's like because you're doing the birth control and the condom so yeah. it's like um but yeah just it's just hella informative and okay. like even there's an episode on periods there's an episode on like women's sex like what's the first episode ever because that's the only one i saw that was i think the, it was like about wet dreams or it wasn't about wet dreams something. but it was definitely about like ma- there was masturbation involved okay. and we found out he has a hormone monster and just, yeah that's what it was yeah. and i was like what in god's name i'm not <laughs> watching this it's actually to me it's really funny but i like stuff that's inappropriate like that but i was just like wow like because it talks about so many different things yeah. like i just feel like it exposes you to so much and the reason why i kind of wanted to bring it up and netflix pay sydney she is advocating you hear me advocating this is what i do um there was an episode where like one of the kids moms gets caught kissing a woman Mm -hmm. and they're talking about how you're having she's having a sexual awakening at like 40 after she's been married to a man (laughs) and has a child she probably been had it but it was probably suppressed by these fucking losers in this misogynistic society right right but it was just but damn where was i going with that I don't, I don't forget. Two moms that. kissing. No, no, no. I know like what it was, but I was going somewhere with it. But maybe just kid, a kid seeing. Oh, it. oh, actually, sorry. Skip over that. I'm gonna just <laughs> I'm gonna cut that out. Oh, I'm you gonna... just wanted to talk about lesbianism. I guess I did. <laughs> um, but no, um... we're leaving that in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's this this idea that children are less likely to be um, molested or at least more likely to come forward about it if they know what their sexual organs are. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we, there's so much just posted about this. Yeah. Like I, I didn't, I didn't see it on Instagram. Yeah. It Um. was, um, it was a flyer that just was like, teach kids the appropriate names for their private parts. Oh, actually I think I did see that. Because there's not anything wrong with saying penis or vagina. Yeah. Because kids are taught stupid ass words. So when they actually are saying what's going on with them, Nobody understands what they're saying. Mm-hmm. So the little girl, the example was a little girl went up to her teacher and said that her uncle licked her cookie. Mm. And the teacher was like, okay, whatever. Right. Like just went about her business and then found out later that he had been molesting her. And Ooh, she was like, oh God. my God, she basically, she tried to tell me, but you know, her like, I, and this is not to blame the mom. Like yeah. this is just to bring awareness that this is why it's important to mm-hmm. teach your babies 
These are places you, people are not allowed to touch you. These are things they're not allowed to say to you. These right. are the appropriate names for them. So right. if they touch your vagina, mm-hmm. your butt, your boot, your breasts, yeah. your penis, yeah. your scroll, like teach kids these things because that, God damn it. Your lips touch the mic? My lips touch the fucking mic. I'm leaving. <laughs> Put your headphones back on. Stop being dramatic. I have to go to my car and get my hand sanitizer. <laughs> this is gross. Um, um, but yeah, teach kids because that's important. Don't want your kids getting molested. And yeah. Go. And so basically I brought that up to say, like, I feel like watching that show would just help to answer so many questions. And I feel mm. like I, I was listening to the read and he was talking about how people like freak out when there's gay shit in cartoons. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I watched a lot of straight shit in my life and none of it made me straight. Mm-hmm. So your, your straight children watching gay things is not going to make them gay unless mm-hmm. they just are. They might feel more empowered to tell you or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking about it from that perspective. Like if our children, we, we try to hide so many things from them as if they're not going to be in this world. And mm-hmm. don't have to already navigate through it when you're not with them, which is most of the time because mm-hmm. you send them to school for eight hours and then you go to work. And so, yeah, right. there, there the a lot world that is I, shaping your kids much more than you are. Absolutely. So I was like, I just feel like I was like, this shit should be a documentary. And, you know, everybody knows I don't want kids. But I was like, if I had them, I would make them watch this shit. And even like because it's got a lot of cursing. <laughs> Six years in old. It. You thought you were watching Scooby-Doo? Yeah. Psych. No, nope, <laughs> about to watch this big mouth because it'll teach you some things. It's got a lot of curse words in it. But even that, I was thinking about it this morning. and I was like, That's not, these are words. My kids are going to hear that regardless yeah i was like these are words that they're gonna hear and it's crazy that we go out of our way to be like oh that, that's a bad word you're not supposed to hear that it's like shit you said shit in front of the baby and you might as well <laughs> at least try to tell them why you think that's a bad word and why they shouldn't use it even though i think cuss words are good for emphasis i don't think they're a um i a, i am too but i want my kids to sound like ti so they probably won't cuss very much does ti not curse it's not that he don't curse. He just knows really big words. Like okay. I want them to find other words to express themselves. Because yeah. mommy will be saying all and the fucks. And see, I'm at a shits. place now where I'm just like, <laughs> um, my vernacular is not a uh, is not symbolic of my uh, my education or how smart I am. Mm-hmm. Like I can use big words That's when fair. I want to, and then on the other side of that, I can also me saying what the freak and me going what the fuck. It, 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 it gives you different emphasis. Yeah. It makes you go, oh, she ain't the word playing. fuck gets me right. Shit, <laughs> motherfucker. You know, that's Samora's favorite Fuck, word. Food, finances. Those are my faves. So okay. I'm gonna say those regardless. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, that was something I wanted to bring up. I meant to bring it up in month in review because I restarted I watched I went over and started the the show again. Like I'm watching it from season one <laughs> now and I'm so sorry. That I don't want to talk to your brain. I wanna apologize on your behalf. No, it's great. <laughs> we should watch it together sometime. Um give it give it give it, give it a second go. You don't okay, like stuff right. I feel like the first time. Did you ever go back and watch Pose? No. Oh, you got to. It's great. Okay. I'll um, try these things again. Okay. But my actual expectation question comes from, um, did you hear about Tank on lip service? Yes. You, so, yeah. you Okay. So I listened to lip service, so I actually heard it in full. Okay. So, um, for anybody that did not hear, um, Tank was on lip service with Angela Yee, and they were having a conversation, and Angela Yee goes, like, she was basically trying to say that this guy, I guess, that she had dated in the past was a liar. Mm-hmm. And she was like, yeah, he, he basically tried to say he wasn't, and he was like, yeah, I only lied twice or something like that about mm-hmm. girls or some shit. And Tank was like, I see what he means. And she's like, what? She's like, just because he lied twice will make him a liar. Like, if I do construction twice, that don't make me a construction mm-hmm. worker. Like, that just means I've done I'm glad you're giving all this context. Yeah. Because I was going to bring it up if you did it. Yeah, and I was. Absolutely. That's, that's some of the reason why I wanted to. Okay. And so um, then he's, he's like, yeah, that don't mean I'm a construction worker. That means I've just done construction twice. So then Angela Yee went, well, if a dude sucks dick twice, does that mean he, that he's gay? And she's like, and he was, I think he was more so just trying to, like, defend his original uh, yeah, argument. Yeah, I think he was fully just being facetious. Yeah. Like, he was just... Um, but I thought it brought up a good, okay, so let me finish. Sorry. Let me finish explaining. So he's like, yeah, no, that don't mean that. Like he, maybe he just didn't know if he liked it the first time. He needed to try it again. Yeah. So now everybody's in his comments calling him gay. There's like a picture of him eating a hot dog and people have lost their marbles. And I was like, there's no quote unquote masculine way to eat a hot dog. You're just going to put that bitch in your mouth and you're going to like it. And bananas too. Wiz Khalifa full on said, "If you eat bananas as a man, you're gay." I think. I think he said it on <laughs> some radio show, and I was like, "Which is hilarious." I think he was just kidding because he like fully gets mad when people make fun of Bash for painting his nails. Oh, okay, well I think maybe he was, he was. Just kidding. good. That's good because I was about to say, "Lord, the, the I've seen dudes eat hot dogs. They like they are hot dogs, bananas. Like they chomp it because they want you to know they are not sucking or putting their lips around it. <laughs> they will lead with their teeth first to eat a banana. <laughs> <laughs> Actually." Um, Please flood my DMs with men eating bananas. Oh my that'll God. make me laugh. <laughs> um, so I brought it up because I was having a conversation with one of my classmates about how we, 
I know it's we're gonna. I'm gonna go back to how it's about the ambiguity of it, and I think that makes people so uncomfortable. It's this idea that if I can't put you in a box, it's making me uncomfortable. So I gotta put you in a box. But it's like, why do we feel the need to define other people's sexuality for them? And and why are our constructions of masculinity and what it what what it means to be a straight man so rigid? Is what made me like, because I'm just like, if a man say he sucked dick twice. He can, and he say he ain't gay. Mind your fucking business. I don't know why. Why you got? Why you got to define his Sometimes sexuality you suck for dick him? Twice. There's a lot of women who've sucked dick twice and decided it wasn't for them. And are they are you still do? straight? Yeah. What are you gonna like? Do? I just think it's like it's it's crazy because it's so hip, I feel like it's so hypocritical when when you switch up who the person is and what the action was. Like if it's a woman, then uh, it's okay. But if it's a guy, no, you're gay for the rest of your life. I mean, and then somebody was under his comments like, if you even think about sucking dick, you gay. And it's like again, mind your business. It's like you sound like you're projecting in here. Are you gay? <laughs> like, are you thinking about sucking dick? Because I think you might be. But um, anyway, yeah, I just wanted. To, I guess I wanted to ask you what you think about our constructions of masculinity and um uh how how you feel that um hyper masculinity if you believe in hyper masculinity affects black men and black women Mm -hmm. or men and women in general Mm. based off of tanks you can suck dick twice and not (laughs) um hmm that's gray Mm. it's gray for me Mm -hmm. and it used to be very black and white Mm mm-hmm like I feel it. like it's only been gray maybe the past recent six months. Mm. Um, I can't say for my own relationship, which is why it's gray. Because I feel like for myself, I want very specific things. But if if one of my guy friends said it, I would be like, oh, yeah, that doesn't make you gay to me. I mean, it was 10 years ago. I, like, I don't what if it was yesterday? <sighs> gray. Okay. Yeah, I think that's that's something that's uh it's changing for me maybe, but yeah, I I I think like I think about how women are allowed to experiment and how men are not. And yeah, it's not fair. I'm think. Do I want a dude who's had some butt play? Not necessarily, but I also don't nec- I don't think that I would be like, "Oh, yeah, but you gay." Like, no, you had a gay experience for sure. Maybe you were gay then. And it's changed because fluid, because curiosity. Have you seen Easy A? Yes. When he's like, I was gay once. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Um, I used to literally be like, nah, you even thought about it. You gay, you gay forever. I don't care how much pussy you get. But now it's just like, no, like if you're not fucking pussy, then. I mean, if you if you don't suck dick, then how? I don't like. And sex, to be like, s- and, and and it's so many things because like so so I had a not argument, but I had a discussion with some guys the other like a couple weeks ago. And they were talking about how their son could never be in dance, blah, blah, blah. And uh, if you do know me, which you may not have that luxury. But if you do know me, you know that if I were to have children, which I do not want any, this is not me speaking anything into the universe. But if I did have kids, specifically if I had sons, they would be in gymnastics. That's Mm -hmm. important to me. It's a general preparedness sport. If you know anything about motor control, motor learning, that's an important sport for any kid to have, any person to have. Flexibility, mobility, strength, endurance, uh, agility, all of those things. It's important because if you want them to play football, you need them to have all those things. If you want them to do dance, you want them to have all those things. Anyway, the argument was that they would not let their kids do gymnastics or dance because they don't want their kids in leotards, blah, blah, blah. I don't want my son to be gay. For one, don't know why you give a fuck if your kid is gay. Has nothing to do with you. Woo. Second of all, um, if I took you today and put you in a leotard, talking to the men I was talking to, if I put you in a leotard today, would that make you want a dick in your ass? <laughs> would that make you want a dick in your mouth? Probably I, not. I, think, I don't think that's going to make a child want penis in their mouths or booties either. I think it makes them, I think it's really a projection of how uncomfortable they feel about their own masculinity. I Which guess. is understandable because that's what you're taught. Yeah, because I'm. They, and that's, that's not me judging them at all, but I feel like you, if you're a guy and you're like, oh my God, I would never be in a leotard, the leotards are gay. Um, <laughs> that is your own fear about how people are perceiving you, I feel. And, and again, like... Why is gay such a negative term to begin with? Like, I mean, we Why use gay do we give a fuck every gay? time. It's like, like, do, gay, like, it's, it's normally, yeah. oh, that shit gay. Like, it's normally a yeah. negative thing. Which I think was way worse when I was, like, in middle school. Yeah. I feel like now, like, people know, like, hey, that's offensive. That's like saying you see something awful and you're like, that's black. Like, bitch, no, no I, it's I, not. I don't know if it is because there's some guys that, like, are in the computer labs when I'm in there sometimes mm-hmm. on campus. And I'll hear them say shit like, you know, that, that pause, that no homo shit. And I'm like, you still feel the need to do that? 
you like really is that where we are bro yeah oh, gross but again that's that's why i wish our education system was more well-rounded like i wish people had to take stuff like women's studies or maybe yeah. if there's like a gay studies class because if like literally your college experience is i'm coming here i'm gonna take these film classes and then i'm out i'm coming here i'm gonna get my md and then i'm out you don't get to learn about all these all these other groups of people which is why you're gonna go the whole rest of your life saying shit like gay i would like to say that you know how many gay people in the world were raised by straight parents straightest of straight didn't let them wear leotards didn't let them watch quote beat their ass cartoons. if they looked at girl cartoons or played with a barbie you and know and guess gay. what still very very and that's gay what's so crazy to me because i'm like do you think keeping like let's say your child is actually gay because we know none of these things have anything to do with sexuality whether they want to wear a leotard or do ballet or play football or anything because yeah. there are gay football players and there are straight male dancers yeah so set it to say let's say you'll get a I'm lot of go, pussy because their bodies are phenomenal i'm gonna go out of my way to keep you away from these quote-unquote gay things mm -hmm. and yet and still going to be gay so all you're doing is um sh uh straining your relationship with your child really is all you're doing so good luck so i so i like teen mom that's my guilty pleasure sorry about it sorry not sorry um but i watch teen mom and there's a couple on there and they were talking about going to the pride parade now they have kids uh one is like an eight-year-old little girl and then they have two babies like under two mm -hmm. and i think they have one son together they have two girls and one son the son is like two um, and they were, and the, the wife was like, oh yeah, we're going to go to the pride parade. And her husband came around the corner and he's wearing a rainbow romper. And she's like, oh my God, yeah, you look great. He's like, yeah, I feel uncomfortable. Like if I sit down, my ass is going to fall out. But you know, hey, like I think, you know, it looks cool, whatever. And on their way to the pride parade, he was just like, yeah, I don't know. He's like, people all the time are like, yeah, but what if your kid is gay? He's like, I wouldn't give a fuck. Like, if my kids are gay, I'm still going to love them the same. Like, why would that bother me at all? And I'm like, this energy. I love it. I stand for it. Because it's like, I'm going to this parade. Like, I don't think that as a man, you would have to go to the gay parade in a, in a rainbow leotard or romper, excuse me. Um, but it's just like, even if you did, that doesn't mean you're gay. You're literally there with your wife and kids. Like, you're not there because you're trying to check out the next male meet you want. You're like, you're there to literally support the cause of saying people should be allowed to love who they love. Mm -hmm. And guess what? My kids could grow up and love who they love. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't care. And I would support them. And when they get older, they're going to be able to look back at pictures of daddy wearing this rainbow romper saying, my dad was always about everybody like what my dad was about this cause mm -hmm. to a fault like mm -hmm. my daddy used to go like he had um a gay couple uh of friends and they would go to the uh, gay pride parade and i don't know that my dad had ever been to one before but when he became friends with them he started going to uh the pride parade in charlotte every year which i thought was really cool i'm like yo my dad is the most inclusive and loving person on the planet like he's the shit to me because i don't know too many body ex bodybuilding bodyguard literally muscle man black men mm -hmm. who feel even an ounce of comfortable enough to go to a pride mm -hmm. parade mm -hmm. let alone go with his gay friends yeah. his gay couple friends right. like because then, you know, having gay friends also makes you gay, apparently, depending on who you ask. And I'm going to tell y'all something. My daddy listened to straight, like, Neo, Kim, Joe, Tank, Usher, all that shit. Like, when I like when I was growing up, Car Rides into Him was, like, all R&B. My dad is an old school player, period. Mm -hmm. Like, he's going to listen to that panty dropping music. That's what he listened to. That was his vibe. So it's just like, listen, my dad got boxed. I'm going to tell y'all that right now. Don't ever try to come for Clarence Barlow. But he would do that. And that, that would make me happy. Like, because mm -hmm. he became friends with him when I was in college. So it's like, when I was in college is when he would start, he like, going to the praise with his, that gay couple and his wife. Like, and it's just like, to me, that was really cool because I'm like, nobody, like, me and my siblings you know aren't gay or whatever but it's like it's just really dope to know that when I was in high school and I had my gay friends come over all the time studs whoever like I played on a basketball team in Charlotte so you know mostly gay friends and it was just like my dad literally was never like hey don't shut the don't shut the door when you go into the room with your stud friend like my dad was always cool like right. and I wish that more parents were like that I wish because that didn't make me any type of way because I played on a team with gay girls, like stud girls. It didn't make me want to stud yeah. girlfriend. Like it just <laughs> meant that my dad was cool with me being who I was. And I wish more men had that freedom and security in themselves to yeah. know that it's okay. Yeah. Like it's not, it's not going to make you gay unless you gay, bruh. Yeah. Or even it if you even... try something that's gay, that don't mean that you gay to me. Right. To me, it don't mean that you gay. I mean, that maybe you were curious 
tried it, didn't like that shit, won't do it again. Like, whatever. Like, or maybe you liked it a little bit and you're bi. Or maybe you liked it a little bit and you're not into dating a man, but maybe you want to suck a weenie every now and then. I don't know. Like, at this point, and, I just think labeling somebody makes them stay in whatever box. And people don't have to be in a box to Yeah, me. exactly. That's my whole point. Because I'm like, even if that's the truth, like, let's say Tank had said that. Like, even if it's, well, maybe you tried it and you like it and you just want to do it every three years and it's just <laughs> your pattern. Every three years. That, if you still walking around saying you're not gay, then let me mind my motherfucking bitch. And when somebody asked me, I'm going to say, he said he was and, great. And otherwise, if you don't date these people, it really doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't understand. Personally, I don't want my man sucking weenie every three years if that's his pattern. Like, I don't want that. Right. But if somebody else does, I couldn't give a fuck. You know why? I don't have a weenie for you to suck. So I don't care. Right. Like, <laughs> I don't care at all. And why y'all are so obsessed with other people's sexuality, especially if you're not interested in dating them, is beyond me. Mm-hmm. If it ain't a child or an animal and it's two consenting adults... I don't give a fuck. Yeah. You could put Skittles in each other's assholes for all I care. <laughs> if that's what you like, that's what you like. I don't care what anybody does sexually. That is your business, bro. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. All right. Well, that's my sex expectation question. I think you are, I think everybody already knows how I feel about uh, <laughs> labeling people. Oh, yeah. Hey, do and what you want. Just in case you're wondering, my answer to that is mind your business. I would like you to know that I posted something while you were talking, but I don't want you to see it till we get up. Nope. Don't touch your phone. I saw it. It says you mentioned me. What you talking about? Yeah. But you can't see it. Oh, God. <laughs> is it me eating a banana? I'll tell you when you can look at it. Matter of fact, I'm going to ask the question, then you can look at it. Okay. <laughs> okay, pull your phone up. My sex expectations question, because just because I want your reaction on air, is can cheat? Uh, so I asked the people. You want me to open it? Wait, now? wait. So, can, so I, got, I asked on um, Instagram, like, hey, what sex expectations do y'all want us to ask uh, questions? So these are actually viewer listener questions okay can cheating be justified open the photo <laughs> where is it hold on a second i think it was on my story <laughs> why does every i don't like chess hair <laughs> and why, what does that have to do with the cheating i just wanted to get your reaction i don't know so it has nothing, nothing to do, do with your question. It has nothing to do with cheating at all. I just thought it was funny. I hate you. Um, For people who are not going to listen to this today, Aaron, hopefully it, it, it might come out today. No. Okay. Never mind. Not. Um, <laughs> tomorrow. Happy belated birthday, JP, and happy <laughs> late Halloween. Right. Um, but uh, class, man. Okay. No, no, no worries. Um, it was a picture of a lot of chess here. Really gross taco meat. <laughs> Ooh. Permanent chess. Like oh, chess. I don't like chess here at all. I, I don't mind chess here, but that shit is. That shit looked rough. Um, can cheating be justified? Cheating I be justified? Uh, my visceral response <clears throat> is no because I feel like if you're mature enough and you have good, well enough communication in your relationship, you should be able to tell somebody you're unhappy. Because I feel like cheating. Well, actually, I was about to say I feel like cheating only happens when you're unhappy, mm-hmm. which I feel like is still some kind of what, way true. But I do think you have people who compulsively cheat, like I e. I love to use Kevin Hart for this example. Oh no, because <laughs> uh, Kevin Hart cheated on his black wife and then cheated on his exotic wife. And he was so black. <laughs> well, y'all know what I mean. Um, and I use when I use the term exotic, I actually mean it as like um, a diss to the people who actually think that shit exists, as if black women are not exotic. Yeah. But um, so like he cheated on Aniko while she was pregnant within the first year of their marriage, mm-hmm. and I was like, now listen, I don't justify cheating whether it's been forty years or forty days. But if you cheat on somebody within one year of your marriage while that person is pregnant, knowing all the bullshit somebody is going through while they're pregnant, Tuh. you probably have no business being in said relationship if that relationship is supposed to be monogamous mm-hmm. because we must make that assumption here. Because I don't know what their, um, their, their things are. But he, so I feel like it can't be because, again, if you were open and honest, even if you're somebody who just was like, damn, you know what? I really just cannot have sex with the same person for the rest of my life. I have to be in an open relationship. That. You should just communicate that because yeah. there is someone out there who is down with that shit. I don't know if that's true, but it it was like said that Toya Wright gave Memphis like eight hall passes a year, oh, mm-hmm. which that's damn near every month, girl. Yeah, you but should just, you should just give them limited ones, girl. I don't know. Um, so yeah, like I just don't think it can be justified because I it, uh, basically to, I guess to be for it to be cheating, that means it has to be something that that with which the terms were not agreed upon in this relationship. I think mm-hmm. that has to be the definition of cheating. Mm-hmm. And so again, if it was, I'm sorry, I just we our sex is terrible. 
you should say something. If mm-hmm. it's, wow, you didn't take the trash out for the fifth time and now I'm going to go cheat <laughs> no, I'm on you. I'm sick of it. Yeah. I'm going to go suck someone else's dick. Whatever it is. <laughs> you could, if you were mature enough, meaning, and mind you, if you're not mature enough and if, you're, if your communication game is not strong enough, then you need to be single. So many people want to be in a relationship so bad who can't communicate and who are not mature enough to be in said relationship. You haven't even healed from your past uh, traumas because you keep hopping into other talking, talking ships. Mm-hmm. So I just be like, yeah, no. Um, I just feel like if we agree to be in this monogamous relationship and then you cheat on me, it could. There's no way it could be justified mm. because you know why I say that because um, I don't, you don't watch Married to Medicine, right? Mm. There's a black uh, doctor on there. Her name is Dr. Jackie, and her husband cheated on her. Mm. And come to like, he kept saying like, "You weren't paying me no attention," and I'm my male ego, me, 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 blah, blah, blah. Men have to get the sperm out every day. Yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. Uh practice some semen retention, you fucking ingrate. So, <laughs> and like people were like, "Yeah, girl," he kept trying to t- like in her DMs. He kept trying to tell you that he needed you, and you was coming home, and you brought your work home with you and you didn't pay your man no attention that's why you got cheated on let me tell you something now again i'm not trying to say um but is that not fair if he said something huh is that not fair if he says he said something but then that so then the next step should have been but he did he say hey you're not meeting my needs hey you're not meeting my needs hey you're not meeting my needs i'm about to go get some pussy elsewhere did he do that see i think you got to be that open with it because sometimes you know you you never know who you're dealing with yeah because some people don't read between the lines but i mean i don't think you should have to because again i think you should be able to say Hi, I, I feel lonely in this relationship. So that means, and at this point, we need to sit down and say, let's open this relationship up or let's get a divorce. So I feel like the communication should be that easy because, again, if you keep saying something time and time again and the person is not meeting your needs, but you're actually communicating effectively, not just dropping hints because, you know, people like to do that shit too. But it's like, no, I literally said what I said. Now let's, we need to take action mm-hmm. because this isn't working. So, yeah, I just, I feel like unless you, and that's what, that's what to me being mature and having strong communication game is like, is you saying things even if they don't sound sound good but you know that they're out of love both for yourself and for your partner Mm -hmm. because then that would be hey here's me showing love to myself because i feel lonely and i'm not getting enough sex in this relationship or whatever his problem was Mm -hmm. and this is me also loving you because now i don't want to hurt you by cheating on you so let's sit down and have this conversation i think even if you were to preface it with that your your whatever conversation you're having Mm -hmm. then you as the partner should be able to go okay all right i see where where you're coming from with this let's proceed forward let's go have sex now if that's the that's the problem (laughs) yeah so yeah um for me, no. What's your What's your response? Oh, can it be justified? I feel like justify is uh, mm-hmm. the word itself is like uh, just guiltless, um, uh, almost like reciprocating. And that's in a perfect word. So I feel like that could only mean get that shit out the mic. Sydney with eating in the mic. She's out of control, y'all. That wasn't in the mic. That bag is so loud. But the bag is over here, though. I can't help. I you heard it the first time in the, in the headphones. Listen, let me tell you Anime. something. Anime. Anime Bullock. I'm moving it. You First of all. First of all, you already ate a banana. What is wrong with you? Uh, people who there are. There is something wrong with you. First of all, that banana looks hard. That's a hard banana. Y'all, it has no brown spots. <laughs> brown spotted bananas are disgusting. No, no, They're no. They're good for you, but they're just No, that good. hard just, it's, it, the hard ones just taste like white. They do. That's true. <laughs> but I'm eating them for the calories, not for the pleasure. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Back on to what you were saying. <laughs> um, it's not just, just by definition, I would say that the only reason they could be quote unquote just is if somebody cheated on you, you cheated back. I guess that would be just. Um, but in general, <laughs> n- I don't funny. think it can be justified. Um, I do think it can be forgiven. I don't think that's a... Not not everything can be forgiven, okay. So this is the thing. When I say this, this is definitely gonna be taken out of context and and not probably well. You you, you just flicked banana in my face. No, I did not. Yes, you did. Did you go over there? Yes. My bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> Clearly disrespectful. This is a dysfunctional episode. <laughs> so he just flicked banana off her hand into my face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting on the other side of the room next time. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're back. We're back. Um, and we're back. <laughs> <laughs> going to you live in the field. Oh my God. Going, uh, out, going out to the field live with Aisha. <laughs> Long pause. And thank you for that. I'm here. No. Um, yeah, no, I think it can be forgiven. I don't think so. A lot of people I've heard like, oh yeah, if, if somebody cheated on me, that is it. That is the end. And I don't know. I feel like there are worse things that could be done. To me, I, honest to God, 
pissing on the toilet seat multiple times <laughs> would make me want to break up with you more than you cheating. Probably. Mm, okay. And it's not that, oh, I'm okay with being cheated on. Uh, I can only think of one time that's ever even happened, and that was, like, in high school. So um, I can't say that, um, like, I'm okay with being cheated on. I just think that that's, like, forgivable. I don't think that's that deep, to be honest. It, I it, think that humans are just human, and having sex with somebody other than one person forever, I think that that's normal. Right, but you should, again, why don't we just say that? Oh, yeah, being being uh, open about it, yeah, it's definitely important. Mm-hmm. So, But I was just that saying way- that I know I don't think it's justifiable unless maybe you're cheating back because that would be, like, the definition of just, I guess. But, um, no, I don't think it's justifiable. Like, I think that anybody that, like, repeatedly does this to you is just like, hey, I'm just not – it's not even that I don't care about you. I think it's more like um, – Because I think you care about somebody, even if you cheat on them, I think because you're like, obviously I'm sneaking because I don't want to hurt you. you. I'm lying because I don't want to hurt you. Everything's gray. So I don't, yeah, gray. Very gray. Everything's gray. Because even lately I've been like, I don't know what I was, it might have been insecure, but everything is about how you tell the story, right? The narrative, because the story is told from Issa's perspective. Mm -hmm. Like there were so many people that were rooting for her and Lawrence to get back together. Yeah. But then there were people that were also like, no. Yeah, she men. cheated. You know, what men. I mean? Yeah, and some women too. I, I, and, and how problematic their relationship was anyway, because she was so unhappy. And again, lack of maturity, lack of communication, didn't tell him that. Very for years big and years lack and years. of communication. Um, but yeah, say that to say. Um, but then you flip it, and you got ghosts cheating on Tasha, and you got people. I'm, I'm over here like, get the girl, get the fuck, get get the fuck ASAP after get this shit. Fuck. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, it just really depends on how the narrative is told and how the story is. And I was actually having a conversation with somebody recently about how, because pe- like, a lot of guys I've noticed don't like Tasha. And I was like, I think it's because she cheated back. I feel like if she had and been. And men are, they swear that she cheated first. And she did not cheat first. Yeah. They make me sick with that shit. Ugh, don't even talk to me about power because all of it makes me sick. Yeah. So, um, <sighs> said it to say, yeah, everything is gray, but I just, because even like, cause so going back to the reason why I brought power and insecure up is because I'll see certain stuff and I'll be like, well, damn, she was sorry. And she probably, like Issa, for instance, probably would never did that shit again. Right. And I feel like if we hear a man say that, we'd be like, boy, fuck you. Right. Once a cheater, always a cheater. Right. Which I don't believe that statement at all. Which is, uh, again, gray. Like, there's, there's going to be people who cheat once and who are going to cheat again. And there are going to be people who cheat once and never cheat again. You just never know. But for me, it's about the juice I get being worth the squeeze and mm-hmm. for me I think because like let's say I, I agree to be in a monogamous relationship with mm-hmm. you and then you cheat it would be me now I'm worried about whether I'm going to trust you or not because I'm not about to be one of them girls that's checking your Instagram looking at what pictures you like and <sighs> looking at your text messages if I got to do all that, that I got to be out this relationship so it's not even necessarily about your cheating it's about what that's your cheating a good caused question. internally in me what can, what? can we have another sex vacation question today? what is this for yeah, no it's no it's only two <laughs> It's just oh, you had a statement and a question. Yeah. I had a question. Um, I mean, I don't have a long. Oh, well, I, mean, I don't have long other things. Okay. What's, Would you go through your partner's things? Oh no. See again, but li- then let me let me preface this. Black and white or gray, Sid? By saying that this is when, you, when you're not in love. I think you're in your right mind. When you're in love, I think Oof. you're basically crazy. Woo, Chile! Have you? There's this movie called Breaking All the Rules. Have you uh-huh. ever seen it? No. It had Gabrielle Union, Jamie Foxx, and Morris Chestnut in it. And Jamie. Yeah, Fox, it sounds like cheating. Jamie Foxx was a breakup <laughs> expert. He wrote yeah. a whole book about how to break up with your partner or some yeah. shit like that. And then he tells Gabrielle Union out on a date in the movie, and he's like, "Yeah, you got to be crazy to be in love." And so, and, and then he was talking about how it take it don't take much pressure to bite through your own skin, but you got to be crazy to do it. Mm-hmm. Like it take it, it takes the same amount of force to bite a carrot as it does to bite through your own thumb, but your brain won't let you do it. Mm. Like that's facts or whatever. So that's by interesting. the by the end of the movie, he's don't gonna, try this at home, please don't. <laughs> so by the end, it wouldn't work anyway though, unless you're crazy. So you, if you want to test and see if you're oh, crazy, oh, that's what we should have people do before they can buy guns oh bite through their own thumb yeah bite their thumbs off yeah ugh. um <laughs> so by the end of the movie jamie fox has bitten through his own skin because he's now in love with gabrielle union trying to say basically he was and basically the movie is saying that love to be in love I'm is to be crazy i want to see this yeah it's actually really <laughs> good um and it's like early 2000s when movies were still good yeah so yeah nice. um but i brought that up to say that uh i'm in my right mind right now because i'm not dating anybody i'm voluntarily single mm-hmm. so in my right mind no but then, mm-hmm. you know, again, once you're in love, that's when you start doing crazy ass shit, mm-hmm. like like busting people tires and shit. So, yeah, in my right mind and in my um, in my state of sanity, mm-hmm. I would not because, again, if I have to do that, I don't need to be in this relationship. If I have to do it, then I don't trust you. And if we don't have trust, what do we have? Yeah, I've definitely done it before, but, uh, again, that was high school. God damn, yeah, that was like high school. I just, I just don't have... 
and all that stuff. I like, just fully believe that everything ain't meant for your eyeballs and your ears. Yeah. Like I feel like anything you take out of any context that was not meant for you is gonna is gonna come off a type of way that you're probably not uncom- that you're uncomfortable with. Like mm-hmm. all of my conversations with Sid ain't meant to be for Kalia because they're not for Kalia, and vice versa. Like all of my conversations with my boyfriend or with Jaleesa ain't meant to be seen by each other mm-hmm. because they're for that person. Mm-hmm. So I. I understand why people obviously can find anything they're looking for, but I just Mm -hmm. feel like that's, for one, an extreme invasion of privacy. It's very... I don't know. I just feel like you shouldn't be violating people that you care about. Yeah, I feel like there you have to ask yourself some questions if you felt the need to do it in the first place. Because again, you don't trust the person, and if you don't trust this person, you about to run yourself. Crazy and even and if it's not shit. about the person, like even if it's just about yourself, it's just yeah. like because some people be like, I, I don't do it because I'm looking for it. I just I'm just genuinely nosy. I'm like, okay, well go see somebody about that because you could have a, you could be doing other things. You know what you could have done in the time you were scrolling through your man phone. Read a fucking book. M- might have wrote a book the way y'all be in each other's phones that's too much yeah. y'all need to get a life also people who share a facebook account or instagram account y'all are weird to me the end who has a who like couples, couples yes they'd be like this is tyler and jamie johnson's facebook and i'd be like y'all gotta go y'all too much <laughs> this is weird to me mm-hmm. okay yeah so that was quick yeah yeah yeah. Uh, so that wraps up sex expectations. Sex expectations. Oh, but yeah. So when I post, hey, bring us your sex expectation questions. Yes, we are actually going to try to do an all viewer episode. Yeah, um, a guys. month in review. Blank while black sounds about white. Um, y'all really love what we do. We would like to see what y'all do. So, yeah. um, we are in the works of making a viewer episode. So we're going to talk about the things that y'all want to talk about. Um. Yeah, we'll and we're gonna ha- try to get them down to a T. So yeah. y'all follow directions. Follow directions. And I only say that because I have heard the things about how people will post like, "Hey, what do y'all want to hear such and such about?" And it'll, y'all will talk about something either completely different than whatever that like section of the show is, or it'll be something we already covered. But I mean, if you didn't hear the episode, that's not your fault. It no, it is. Um, catch up. <laughs> uh, you got YouTube. You got Spotify. You got Google Play. You got Apple Podcasts. Catch up, get in the know. If there are certain things that you want to hear about, especially sex expectations and things, because there are things I feel like we go over more than once mm-hmm. because of tangents. But in general, like a lot of things we've already covered. So mm-hmm. um, I did get a lot of questions when I asked for your sex expectations, um, but I didn't want to ask them all at one time. So this is just one of them, but we do want to view- do a viewer episode. So make sure that y'all are paying attention, you're commenting, you're letting us know what y'all want to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want advice for any shenanigans that y'all are up to. Oh, yeah. I love the advice part of um, the. Read. of all the podcasts i think they are great because oh of course God. when you're not in a situation you see so much clearer because yeah. you're not crazy you're not out here biting carrots through fingers and things yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's what that was so um, yeah viewer episode coming soon yes so uh black, black on, on black, black support. support gang gang um my black on black support was actually all about you and malik's photo shoot which i covered in stop this is too much the month on month review are you crazy but it was just really really bomb and everybody had such a a, a amazing response to it and i was uh. it was cool to see y'all work together because you know friends with you friends with malik i worked mm-hmm. with malik so it's cool when people connect like that yeah um um, so yeah, I was, I was really excited to see two, two great, two people who are great at what they do come this together too much. and do the things. I cannot. Yeah. And it got like thousands of uh, likes, right? On your page? Yeah. Yeah. I think like Broke almost the thou. two thousand. But I, I noticed also that you've been breaking the thou a lot lately. Oh, well, so this is at 1957. Mm. So, hey, people, go Get like a few liking. more times that's, for that's two, break two. Have for you broke two, two before? Have you broke two before? Um, yeah, I have one photo with like 4,000, but it's like from a long time ago. Is it the you one? know, like my father would be weird. Like one photo might get like 300 and the one might get like 1,000. Like, Is I don't know. I don't pay attention braids? anymore. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's when I was like Not viral one. for like five minutes of my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, let's see how many this has. Okay, 11. Yeah. So where did you other eight go? That's what I'd be wondering. Like, when a photo gets, like, 300 and a photo gets, like, 1,200, I'd be like, so... But y'all didn't like this at all, so y'all didn't even like. Are you? Do you, just po- you post like at different times during the day too, though. Like I've noticed yeah, that I you're posting in the morning really and night. Yeah. So I was gonna say, if you had a business page, though, you could see when your people are on, and then you could really capitalize off those likes. If I you feel like I should, should because uh, visibility is important for what I you know want to do to Absolutely. an extent. But I also just don't. It's a lot to get wrapped up in. It's it's too much, especially because I'd be like, first of all, it only matters. Like, I don't even think timing matters anymore because we're not in the chronological order anymore. Oh, no, it does. 
Oh, it does? It does, because I, like, I have a business page, because, you know, I was trying to increase my following because uh-huh. of my blog. Uh-huh. And um, when I post during, well, I ha- you know what? Let me take that back, because I actually haven't posted outside of it. But I will say that there was a significant difference between when I was just posting whenever and when I actually did start posting during that time. Mm. I haven't experimented and been like, oh. But isn't it still about, um, I don't even, I don't even know it's what an algorithm about, is. I'm going to keep it a ban. I don't fucking yeah, know. So I don't understand this shit. The way care. the algorithm works is that the more people interact with it, the more people it will be seen by. So, like, mm. if... If you like it and you comment, then it's twice as likely if you hadn't, I guess. To, and then it just continues to get more and more likely as people interact with it. So that's why I like commenting back. That's why I like sometimes you might comment some like hearts or shit and some people will just comment like random shit back to you. It's because <laughs> that still increases the uh, interaction with the photo. So I just try to do that so I know that people know that I appreciate all the love. Yeah, absolutely. Except for the people who say weird things. I just, I don't usually delete it. I usually just skip over it because I'm like, you're weird. I'm not going to. Yeah, Gary V, um, who's like super, you've heard, have you heard of Gary V? Gary, mm-hmm. uh, he's just i can't remember exactly where he started from um but he uh is super like um popular now and he's like i still comment back to everybody i still will email mm. everybody back even if it takes me weeks to get i would hire them. somebody to do that yeah <laughs> and he was just saying because i just want to always remember that at one point or another nobody was fucking with me and i was yeah. still because he was saying whether i had two people following me or two million i still comment back to everybody oh my god i'd be yeah. like hey limit those comments <laughs> what let me t- and the worst oh thing- i would limit because com- you can do that yeah like there's on there's off and then there's also like a, a limit like a certain oh, nice. amount of comments that yeah you can be like, okay this is i done might need to do that because i do be overwhelmed which i hate when somebody posts something that i'm i fucking gag over and i want to comment and be like oh my god bitch you fucked this shit up and the comments are limited and i'm like damn it that means like probably hateful people commented and i wanted to give you love or people who are under there saying check out my mixtape oh hey i do doodles and cartoons follow me and i just be like y'all gotta dm me for my prices shit. i'd be like bro i understand hustle by any means but you are annoying to me yeah somebody i don't even know how or whom they are somebody mm-hmm. text me text me with no prior thread and not a saved <laughs> number, so I clearly don't know this person. They text me their SoundCloud link. <laughs> That's amazing. It's kind of scary. It's actually scary and amazing. I would rather eat a denim jacket than respond or click that link. Yeah, did I tell you so? Karuchi. It was like a Virginia number. I'm like, I don't even know anybody in Virginia. Karuchi got on her like, on her page saying like, y'all can text me at this number. Like, it'll be me. Blah 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 blah. Huh? I got a new number. So my dumb ass, I went and texted it, and it was seven eight triple nine eight two. And it was like, um, <laughs> hi, this is like a, it came back as soon as I sent the text. And this is really me. This it's is my really automatic Karuchi response. And um, so lock, click this link to lock my contact in your phone. And I was like, I'm not clicking this fucking link. I don't know what the fuck that shit is. Because I was like, I don't need to click a link. Did she post a video? To, on this yeah. Time? Here it is right here. Look. Hi, my love. It's heart emoji. It's me, Karuchi. I got your message. Make sure you click the link to add me as, an, as a contact. Well, I hope her man don't go through her phone. Because so she's going to have hella texts from strangers. Okay, <laughs> dick pics. So, stay, so we can stay connected. This is so exciting. Can't wait to hear from you. And it's like community.com. And I was like, I'm not. And then she sent me another one. Hey, hey, it's Karuchi. You still hadn't added me to your contacts. You can see that? You're you can thirsty, Karuchi? I'm confused. I was like, hey, is this really Karuchi? And that's what I got back. <laughs> I was just want to ask her. I don't, I don't even know. That's the what thing. What do you want to ask Karuchi? I don't I, know. I, that's what I want to know. Something about claws and can she hook me up with Niecy Nash maybe? Which is probably um, not the best thing to say. I would maybe ask for her skincare. Okay. But I think she's, uh, I mean, she's Asian, so I feel like that plays a big part. Because Asians have really great skin, I think. I don't have anything I need to ask Karuchi. Like, I wish, I wish Ava DuVernay would do that shit. Mm. I need oh, Beyonce to I do it. I would lose my shit. <laughs> anyway, um, tangent. What the fuck are we even talking about? <laughs> we were talking about somebody had sent you their SoundCloud. <laughs> But I don't yeah, know how we but got how there. did we get there? Don't 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 bring it back to oh, my part. Oh, we were part talking of the story. about you and Malik, and that was my black on black support. <laughs> and this is how we're here. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Sorry, y'all. We clearly we ain't, we got out, we out of practice because Aisha left for a month. So and I'm having an anxiety attack because I had coffee. That's Ugh. probably what's going on. And I'm menstruating, which is actually not how you pronounce that. Did you know that? I'm menstruating. It's menstruation. <laughs> yeah, you fucking country bumpkin. With a you. Where did you get this shit? Listen, I, I, I I'm said, menstruating. I said that to Elise <laughs> yesterday, and she was like, "That's not how you say it." Oh, don't don't say dumb words to nurses. And then she was like, "It's menstruation," and I was like, "No, no, no." It's menstruation. And then that's how it's actually pronounced. But she tried to correct me on saying it wrong, but she also said it wrong, too. So I was like, I get to say it how I want to. If y'all get to take that U out, I can put the U where I want to. I'm about to leave this studio. 
so yeah, say that to say, <laughs> um, I just have my brain works differently when I'm bleeding out. So nice. I tried to describe to some fucking loser man yesterday what this is like, and I was like, for one, I'm being punished by God for not being pregnant. Mm-hmm. That's and the first to thing. me, it feels and like. And do you know how it feels mentally to be punished tangent. by God? This is a tangent. I don't care anymore because you got us here. <laughs> it feels like, like you know, when you see somebody hit one of those like those gongs, gong. Yeah. It, it. If pain were that sound, that's what cramps feel like to me. It. Um. And I, like the the hormone monster when he goes rage, rage, okay. fucking rage. Nobody knows that. Actually, no. lots of people watch that show. It makes me sad. Which is because it's on the third season. So yeah, you're the only one that's not with the shit. You don't watch any of the good shit I try to put you anyway, on. Anyway, back Frankie. to this first tangent. It feels to me like a Chucky doll is inside my uterus, Ooh. and he's taking his little knife and he's trying to carve his little ugly ass way out. That's how it feels to me, and it fucking sucks. It makes me fold over like a metal foldy chair. I'll literally be talking like, yeah, so what do you, uh, uh, uh," and I'll fold over (laughs) dead. It's fucking worse. You don't take medicine, do you? And you know what the man said to me yesterday? He was like, I mean, haven't you been dealing with this since you were like, what, 12? Oh my God. You should be, you should be good with this by now. First of all, bitch, this is not an exact science. This has different pains every day, every single time it happens. Different symptoms. Different symptoms. Sometimes I'm a bitch. Sometimes I start baking and I'm extra happy. And what's crazy is it seems like to me, I don't know if it's the medicine I take, like the caffeine that's in the medicine, but I can be like yesterday, I was lit- I was literally in pain, but I was like in a in a in a emotional euphoric happiness state at the same yeah, time. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I could be baking cookies and inside be like, help me. Yeah. It's weird as fuck. I was literally- Right, so don't tell me. What I've been dealing with since I was 12, because I will fucking punch you in the nuts and say, didn't that happen when you were 12 or so? You should be fine with it by now. Life has been perpetually punching you in the nuts. You should be fine with this. Fucking cramps hurt. Fuck y'all. And it's because I was trying to leave work. That's what happened. But it was because I was in so much pain. Mm -hmm. And like you said, I don't take medicine. So Mm -hmm. I was in so much pain that I took medicine. Wow. And I was like, this shit is getting approximately 29 minutes and 59 seconds to work because if it doesn't i'm going home <laughs> and he was like i should you know like it's been 10 minutes like you be all right and i was like no no no. i'm telling you we are down to whatever minutes and whatever seconds and i'm going home i am in physical pain and luckily the medicine something. did kick in so who knew medicine worked sometimes but i'm was still not gonna take that shit was it my doll no it oh. was like 800 milligrams of ibuprofen oh yeah my doll's a shit but listen i would just like to say why are we here um <laughs> that i'm gonna relate this back to my black on black support by saying <laughs> that i support all black women who are currently in a state of menstruation oh god love us. menstruation is actually how you say it though god love us yeah thank you moon for this sh- shit mm-hmm. all right so why are we here? Where's what are black we, on black what are we talking about today? Right. <laughs> no. um, black We're, on black support for me. It goes to be- two beautiful young queens, actually. First one, my good friend Brianna. She does makeup. She's been mm-hmm. booking some weddings lately. Uh, lots of photo shoots. Oh, doing the damn man. thing. Yes. yes, queen. Yes, queen. Actually, Malik asked me the other day if I knew of any uh, makeup artists, and I, I referenced her. Yes. Love her. Um, so you can find her business page at Bellastry underscore Cosmetics. Mm-hmm. It's B-E-L-L-A-S-T-R-Y underscore Cosmetics. Uh, my friend Brianna, book her, get booked in busy girl, um, doing makeup and the things. Um, so shout out to you, good queen. We love you and thank you um, from the bottom of our hearts for always supporting the show. Absolutely. That girl is full of light and love. So. Yes. yes. Full of light and love. We love you. Oh, and she's on her lock journey. Word. Yes. Okay. So on. you better work, I think, sister. You know we talked about that. We talked about it in, um, in the DMs. And Did she's you? Like, yeah, yeah. So I my life journey. I was like, oh, you better go, girl. Yes, so, yeah. it's very exciting. Um, and then my other black on black support is for um at v dot ivy boutique. Um, that is my baby cousin's boutique. She is um ba- basically toddler ball. She's you know too out here with a whole boutique in these streets. Yeah. Yeah, it's my cousin's baby. But she started a boutique for her. For her. Oh, that's mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, oh, so yeah. it's going to be um, like babies and toddler fashion clothing. So cute, adorable little mini fur vests and boots and dresses, like a 
adorable. Um, so support these black owned businesses, these black queens. Support, Hell support, yeah. support. Black on black support is my favorite. Black on black. And okay. black support could be as, as small as, girl, I see you doing the things. Congrats. Yeah, send an uplifting message, share a profile, buy something, tell a friend about it who has a baby, maybe. Oh, Christmas is coming up. Buy some gifts. Because um, yeah, if I wore makeup, girl, Brianna, I'd be hitting you up. Support goes so many ways, and it, and it doesn't have to be, oh, you don't support me because you didn't buy xyz because uh, i'm not i don't care to have everybody's business because it's like everybody ain't meant to afford what i what i do or what mm-hmm. i want or, or what i sell like if i had a women's boutique i wouldn't be out here yelling at men hey buy your girlfriend something buy your girlfriend something like it's just about support like mm-hmm. share this profile that costs you zero dollars and zero cents yeah, and zero like, time tell a friend about it mm-hmm. cost you zero dollars as well mm-hmm. just support 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 those are my queens that i'm shouting out this week absolutely ready for a mental health check-in yeah. I actually have one for one. Oh, nice. Yes. So while I was at ECU, Enoch put me on to Gravity Beats. Okay. It's a, um, it sounds like, um, like for instance, so if you go to, if you type in, or if you have Apple Music or Spotify or whatever the things are, if you type in Binaural Serenity Mind, that's the quote unquote artist, I think. So Binaural, I didn't know how to spell it. B-I-N-A-U-R-A-L. Uh, serenity mind and it says gravity beats cosmical frequencies and sounds mm. and so like oh i've heard of this mm-hmm. i wanted to try it because you know i have horrible sleep patterns yeah so like it's got for instance the first quote-unquote uh song on this playlist or on this um album is high alpha 12 hertz which is for rem sleep mm. there is um low alpha 8 hertz for sleep aid um long mid beta 20 hertz for brain like i see there's relaxation on here meditation mm. so yeah I and I, so I, um, he was playing it at his, at his house, and I was like, what is this? <sighs> Enoch, you sound like a gym. Mm-hmm. And I was like, he's like, yeah, like you, I just play it. He was like, because Enoch is. I should play some of that, because I listen to a lot of Trap House 3, and maybe I should switch those out every now and then. Yeah, so I was listening <laughs> to Brother Polite once on um, uh, The Breakfast Club, and he was like, you can, be men- you can be physically alive and be mentally dead, and part mm. of that is the music we listen to, the frequencies oh, yeah. that it plays I take, at. I take in a lot of murder, murder, kill, kill, sell, sell, drug, drug. Right, but I think, I think it, even <laughs> not just the lyrics, but even the beat itself, mm. I think it's more of a frequency thing he was saying. It's like at a low lower frequency but sounds like nature and things like they increase your frequency mm. um and so like when he when he showed me that i was like, oh yeah i'm definitely gonna try it and so um i've been trying it i did not like but because I, I, I normally sleep to rain and thunder mm. those sounds I love that. um but i need to switch back because i did it while i was in greenville but i haven't done it since but um yeah so i just wanted to throw it out there how um, has it felt since trying it um i feel like but you know it's it's homecoming, so I was had a erratic sleep schedule anyway. Mm-hmm. Like I would get into bed at one, even though I'd be like, I'm about. To, I would literally leave Kira because me and Kira stayed at two different places, and be like, all right, girl, I'm going to sleep. It was like ten o'clock. Still oh, black on to- black support, Kira, you looked phenomenal, girl. Mm-hmm. I Absolutely. miss you. I miss your beautiful face. Um, she. Oh, and I would leave. I'm like, yeah, girl, I'm going to sleep. I would get to my my uh, destination, and I would be like, it's one a.m. How did this happen? Mm-hmm. So yeah, which is my normal Sounds life like as far as homecoming goes. But anyway, said it to say because my sleep pattern was erratic, I can't really like judge it yet. But um. Um, I uh, definitely recommend it to the people for my mental health check-in because I just feel like the higher we can get our frequencies, the nicer we'll be to people, the kinder, mm-hmm. maybe the more things we can create. And the less things we will take personal. Yeah, maybe, yeah, all the things. So, yeah, I'm going to say it one more time for the people. It is Gravity Beats, uh, Cosmical Frequencies and Sounds by Binaural Serenity Mind. Nice. Let's check it out. Cool. Uh, my mental health check-in is to work out, people. Hell Yeah. Working out is good for lots of things, but um, it's going to improve your mood, your self-esteem, your um, sleep schedule, your self-efficacy, your cognitive function, brain blood circulation. Hello, that's important. Um, And releasing, obviously, endorphins and serotonin and happy chemicals in your body. Mm -hmm. So that's important. And also will reduce stress, negativity, depression, um, maybe some weight if that's one of your goals. Um, But yeah, working out is incredible incredibly important to your mental health Mm -hmm. and most people probably just see it as a physical health kind of thing and it is extremely mental like uh, like going to the gym when I'm like angry hello that's time for gains or like an extra long cardio session or whatever like 
you uh, you kind of like, and when you get out of the groove, you forget how good it feels to work out. Mm -hmm. When you're in a groove and you're like, damn, I've been at it for two weeks, you know, going five days a week, whatever it is. It's just like, damn, I feel so much better. Just like mentally, I feel better. Like if I start my day, because I like morning workouts. I don't like evening workouts because it gives me too many chemicals. Like I can't sleep at night if I work out at night. Mm -hmm. um, but when I work out in the morning, I just have such a better day. I'm mm -hmm. like, it's kind of like how I feel like when I, when I wake up in the morning, I'm like, if I only do one thing today, I know I will make i'll make the bed like and so when i come home i'm like damn i had a shit day i did one thing right though i made the bed right <laughs> i maybe hit a mailbox on the way out i cussed at people they were mean to me i was mean to them i had a horrible day at work but i made my bed mm -hmm. that's one good thing i did that's right. one good thing but that's how working out feels to me so working out for your mental health is very important and that is my check-in for you beautiful people today mm -hmm. i hope that you make some time to work out even if it's 10 minutes start with 10 minutes a day because we can fit that in yeah and then maybe wake your work your way to 30 minutes yeah to an hour, whatever it is that you're feeling good about. Right. But I promise you, if you give yourself a nice schedule, a regimen, you will feel so much better mentally. Yeah. And you might already said this too, but it also helps you with, um, a, like I think, uh, information retention. Like it yeah, helps you it with does. Studying it grows the hippocampus part of your brain. Yeah. So it so helps you with memory. If you're in school, you know, getting your master's, your PhD, your MD, your JD yes. or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Exercise too. It yeah. helps. Yeah. Um, might make studying for that test a little shorter because you retained more information from Absolutely. class the last time you read it. Bet y'all didn't know that. You're all welcome. Absolutely. Um, okay, so affirmations. Yes. We're going to close out our show with these good affirmations. Yes. Um, you want to go first? Sure. Um, mine is to call someone you love. Mm -hmm. Always. Of course. Always do that. If somebody crosses your mind, send them a text. Mm -hmm. Call them. Send them a DM. Mm -hmm. uh, contacting people is very easy these days. It so, is so just do it, even things. for two seconds. Just say, hey, thinking of you. Love you. Bye. Um, and my second one is to mean what you say. Mm. I find myself um, saying things because it's a habit or it's mm -hmm. a temporary feeling or mm -hmm. whatever. For example, when I go to work, huh, I'm bored. Huh, I'm tired. Huh, like, how's work going? Ugh, God, it's lame. Like, whatever. Like, when you say those things, you are almost, like, cementing them. Because there's no way you're going to start your day with, like, oh, I'm tired, I'm bored. And it's just going to all of a sudden skyrocket into a great amazingness. Yeah. Like, you have got to mean what you say. So when I find myself doing it that, that at work, because I do do it a lot. Like, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm making myself more conscious. So when I say it, I'm like, oh, I'm tired. And then I'll be like, oh, shit. I am blessed to be here because you know what? I could not have a job and mm -hmm. I could be struggling to pay some bills. Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful to be here. Like I'll, I'll, I'll consciously be like, oh shit. Like I did not mean to say I'm tired. Not because I'm not, but because if I say that, like that's going to be my attitude. If I say I'm tired, that means everything I got, everything I do now, because I told somebody I'm tired has to be sluggish. Yep. Like you're, you like physically start doing what you yep. say. Yep. So like, even if I walk in not tired, somebody say, Hey, how are you doing? Oh, I'm tired. Like it's rainy today, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, then I'm going to be sluggish. I'm going to be slow. I'm going to have less intention and less positivity about what I do. Yep. So mean what you say. Be conscious of the things that you say that as soon as they leave your lips, you know it was negative. Right. I'm tired. I'm bored. I'm broke. I say that one a lot. So I've, I've consciously started being like, no, I'm not broke because my needs are my needs are met. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not broke. There are people who are broke. And if I continue to say I'm broke, I'm poor, I can't afford to do this or that, like, that is going to be my situation, and that's yeah. going to be my reality. Yeah. And I know that I've not, I'm not, like, always been, like, overwhelmingly blessed and rich, but I've never been poor. Yeah. I that's know, never right. happened to me, and I'm grateful and I'm blessed that that's never been my life. I've never been forced to sleep outside. I've never been forced to go a week with no food. Mm -hmm. I've never had to wear stinky clothes. Mm -hmm. I've never, like, not had a washer and dryer. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like, no, I'm not poor. And let me stop saying that because I don't want that to be my reality. And yeah. I'm grateful for what I have. Me, what you say, that's my affirmation. And even, like, just a couple things, like, mm -hmm. that, that popped up in my head while you were saying that. Like, it also, when you say those things and they're not your reality, it almost, like, downplays the reality of the people who are actually going through that. The, right, like exactly. When people say, like, we, we talked about it before. Like, oh, I'm working like a slave. No, you know nothing of working like a slave. <gasps> Whoo! I heard somebody white say that the other day. Um, and same thing with, like, oh, I'm poor. Like, because I've, I've said it. I think, like, we started, like, jokingly saying it in college because you typically are. You feel poor in college. Yeah, quote unquote, exactly. Which you could never still know. And that's, that's what made me conscious of it because I was like, um, I, you know, I was saying it at work or when I got back from LA, I was saying it a lot because people are like, hey, come do this. Hey, come to my birthday. Hey, go out. Hey, do this. I'm like, no, no, no. I don't need to spend $40 every day unnecessarily yeah. because I'm poor. Yeah. I just went and I spent all this money. Yeah. I am not poor. Yeah. Am I in debt a little? Yes. Am but I'm not poor. Yeah. 
And so, because what I was going to say, um, the other thing that it made me think of, too, is that it's not necessarily what's going on out here. It's more so about your response. And that's pretty much what all chakra is about. It's mm-hmm. all about, like, you can really get, you can affect everything out here by getting what's inside aligned and mm-hmm. all that good stuff. And so, because I, I, I literally was telling somebody, I was like, oh, yeah, I don't I do not do this at my job because I don't, I don't like my manager or some shit. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, actually, that's not an excuse. You hey, still- is this taking us back to the four agreements? Yeah. Do everything. What was, I don't even know what it was. Do, do everything, everything with intent, intent or, or like do your best, I think. Oh, always, always do your best. Yeah, yeah. It's like you can't, like you, that's an excuse. Oh, yeah. because I don't like my manager, I'm going to be a less. Um, I will not be true to me. Yeah. Because I don't like. I'm whatever. not going to work hard at whatever the quote unquote goals are of this job. Like, no, I'm going to do the job and I'm I'm still not going to like my manager, but I'm going to do my job to the best of my ability. Yeah. Um. And then the other thing I thought about too was the uh, electrical impulses in the body. Like I remember Jay Will who listens to the show. Shout out to Jay Will. <laughs> You do? Um, hey, Jay Will. He does. Um, He posted, it was a long time ago, I like will normally screenshot the shit in his stories because they just be like fire. And, but he was like, when you think negative thoughts, it creates negative electrical impulses in your body and yeah. you will create a negative environment. Yeah. And I thought, I've literally been having that same feeling too, like I'll be somewhere and I'll be like, oh, I'm tired. And I was like, wait, let me stop saying that. It was, it was at homecoming because I probably was tired from yeah. driving four hours. But I was like, but whatever, I'm not tired, I'm good. Yeah. I'm at homecoming. I'm, let me get up, let me get my shit. And so, it's also not to say that you can't, you can't feel how you're feeling yeah. but think about the power in your words yeah. think about the strength that that has that those words writing that spell mm-hmm. spelling you are you are manifesting things on accident yeah. like you are accidentally creating a poor environment and and, and even in poor when you just say that you mm-hmm. automatically have a negative connotation. So what mm-hmm. you're doing more than anything is creating something negative in your mind of mm-hmm. I'm poor. You're not creating I'm poor, so let money flow to me. Yeah. That's not what you're doing. Yeah. You're saying I'm poor, so let's let poor come to you. Right. And you can literally take baby steps because lately I'll say like, I don't know who I was talking to. I was like, no, 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 I can't. I'm poor. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. I'm not poor in spirit. I am not poor in this. Yes. I am just not where I want to be finding it. Like so to me, the best thing to say would just be able to say like, I don't want to spend money on that. That would be me at my best. But me at, at trying to get at being my best, would it, be me at, it would be me at least saying I'm not poor in spirit. I might be right. poor financially. And my baby step is. Getting to the point where I can catch myself Mm -hmm. so I can correct myself so that that way it'll become a habit to not say it in the first place, right. to only speak positivity and blessings over Absolutely. my life. Absolutely. I've been so proud of myself lately for just even going, I catch that now, though. I didn't used to catch that. I used yeah. to just do that shit. Baby steps. Yeah. Okay, as long as we're going forward, baby. Yeah, so that was, so you get three affirmations today, because baby steps is number two, and uh, mine was, wait, were you done? Was yeah, there, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, mine was do what makes you happy, and I might have said that before in so, in so many words, um, but... Uh, yeah, I just want you guys to just do what makes you happy because in general you'll be happier, mm-hmm. and uh, again you'll create positive electrical impulses mm-hmm. and all the good things. So yeah, that's the that on that. And Aisha's gonna tell you where you can go. <laughs> Thanks guys for tuning in to another episode of the Living Room at Forty Four Forty with your beautiful host at Sid the Great and your other beautiful host me 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 me. <laughs> Um, you know where you can find us. Don't forget to tune in to the questions that we ask you in the living room on Cindy's page, on my page at Aisha Damali. Um, when we're asking you the content that you want for the viewer episode, I'm really excited about that because I like to know what y'all want to talk about. Um, but you're gonna have to be consistent, y'all, because you know new things happen every week. So mm-hmm. you're gonna Absolutely. need to respond. We get to know what we need to research because we do try our best not to read things at headline value. Absolutely. So with that being said, beautiful people, y'all don't gotta go home. But y'all do got to get the hell out the living room because we're out of time. And unless you want to send us some cash up, we got to go. Peace. <laughs>